Pop open your umbrella. It's raining T-Virus on Bad Movies Rule, the worst movie podcast ever recorded. And today we've got the manimal, Bob Hauser, and the human movie database, Ryan Farrell. And we're joined, blessed rather, by his lovely wife, Steph Farrell, is in the house. I'm James Hauser. We're talking about Resident Evil. Let's go! It's rain and body parts. This was actually very tame for a zombie movie. Well, what are we comparing it to? Dawn of the Dead? No, we're comparing it to <laughs> nowadays where you have to see someone's eyeballs get ripped out of their oh, sockets yeah. and digested in a human monster. After six seasons of The Walking Dead. And it, I, that's all I recognize there being is six seasons of The Walking Dead. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't feel quite as bad. <laughs> Doesn't feel quite as grotesque. T virus you know. brought to you by Pfizer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. We're off and running. <laughs> Straight into it. <laughs> Welcome, guys. Thanks for coming in. Ryan brought in his the entire box set of all six Resident Evil movies. All six. So right there. I, I have to wait. I have to correct myself from Please. yesterday. Yeah. Uh, Paul W. S. Anderson did directed the first one. Okay. The fourth, fifth, and sixth one. You didn't do two or three. Two and three were not Paul. No, okay, because no, I had no. Bob last night. We were watching some wrestling. Wrestling. Right. I asked if he had done all of them because I didn't feel like looking it up myself. That's par for the course. Yeah. And uh, he wrote the second and third one. Okay. Interesting. He stayed on as a producer for yeah. the whole franchise. I just thought he just he's just. I thought he just needed to keep giving his wife jobs, and that's why he just kept directing these movies. <laughs> right? He's like, honey, it's been a while. That, you need to work. That's exactly what would happen between <laughs> yeah, us. Yeah. We're just going to keep like, going. You know I'm just going to oh. make this movie because I haven't gotten work in a while. Uh, so. Do you need me to make another movie? Yeah. I, do I need to do another Resident Evil? It's been a minute. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I let's got do you. It. You're starting let's to sound like you're feeling down. <laughs> do we need to make another movie? <laughs> uh, Perfect. Well, look, as you've already figured this out, we're talking about Resident Evil, the movie series that's been. All kinds of different ways that the Resident Evil games have been adapted in this movie series. There's been cartoon or animated films. There's been a new series on Netflix that got destroyed. Well, that's what happens critics. when you mess with the source material. It, I see. I haven't seen the new Netflix one. Is it is it trash? Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Even though um, the new movie that came out two years ago, Resident Evil: Welcome to Raccoon City. Oh, and there's that one too. Yes, which was even supposed to be more of a faithful adaptation. <laughs> Of the source material, <laughs> even that got trashed. Yeah, I mean, so they but, just yeah. as to have yet, as far as in critics' minds, I mean, there's people that I'm sure have love for these movies, the six that 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 Paul W. S. Anderson started here. I love them, but it seems to be a struggle for people to adapt Resident Evil into any other medium other than games. Yeah, have you played the games? You I remember the game. Okay, yeah, Mm-mm. yeah, you, I, I, I know you played. It, yeah, first first three, I didn't touch the last. Let's just five. let's just touch on this right now Plus because five. get it out of the way. <laughs> right, there's right. been a lot, dude. There's eight. There's eight chronological games, and then there's like a bunch of spinoffs. Yeah, so I played a couple of. I, here's my Resident Evil Street cred. I did play Resident Evil Zero, Biohazard, two, three, four, five, six. Mm. I haven't played seven. <laughs> okay, uh, I played Code Veronica. That was one of the. That was, that was on uh, Dreamcast. That yes. game slapped. Dude. Yeah, what's up now awesome. on Dreamcast? <laughs> on Dreamcast. Dreamcast. Oh my god! Don't knock right. the cast. Uh. So, lots of love for me from the game series, and, and okay. it, it's interesting you said this new one's supposed to be a faithful adaptation because when uh, you know twenty one year old me went in two thousand two to see this movie in the theaters, pumped out of my gourd because it's a Resident Evil movie, mm. I was so pissed off. I was gonna say you as a <laughs> as a video game fanboy for the movie. Yeah, coming out. Yeah, I, I could see how you were completely disappointed. Yeah, so we'll get into that as we talk through because sure. ultimately, when they made this movie, they decided to not include any of the characters from the game. Not in the first one. Uh, not in the first one. No. no, I think they no. saw the folly of their ways after the first one and the response of the fans. Yeah, and then they tried to like introduce Jill Valentine as a supporting character in the right. second one, and, and Chris Redfield. Yeah, 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 yeah right. exactly. Chris Redfield didn't show up till like the I, fourth I, movie. Well, then I think, and it's the guy from the Mummy. Is Chris Redfield? Uh, right? No, it's uh, some. He was from Prison Break. Okay, not, not the. I know Allie Larder shows up as Jill uh, or as uh, Claire, Claire Redfield. Redfield. Yeah. She's Claire. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. At some point down the line, so yeah. we got all kinds of goodies. We'll all then eventually do all six of these things, but I think it's oh boy, it's absolutely. <laughs> yeah, you're now you're in Tremors and Resident Evil. <laughs> you know um, what though? I'll tell you full disclosure. <laughs> yeah. Even though I have the box set, mm. I have not watched Past Extinction. Which is I see I don't know the number or the names yet. So that's the that, third one. You have only watched the first three. I watched the first three, and after Extinction, I was done. 
From what I've understood, <laughs> at least if you look at the numbers, it's a slow decline yes. until the final chapter, which is a slight... Yep. Still not into the green, but it upticks a little bit from yeah. the last one. Yeah, it does. I don't know. We'll see as we go through it. Uh, as we said, the movie was directed by Paul W.S. Anderson, who prior to this had his video game cred uh, established by directing Mortal Kombat. Still the best Mortal Kombat movie. Still the best video game adaptation movie, maybe. Yeah. If you're talking about live action, I know yeah. Super Mario yeah. Brothers. People 21, like the 2021 one. Mortal Kombat film was a trash can. Compared to the old one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, dude. Like well, like They're like, let's put in this yeah. character no one even knows or cares about. That, I get it. I get it. I liked it. I thought Do it was... I did not. Yeah. Do you I get it. Lame. I liked it. It did not have Lyndon Ashby as Johnny Cage. It I did know. not Nobody have wanted. Robin Shaw. I know. It did I know. not have the guy that played Sang, so I can't Him pronounce either. his name. I know. Uh, give all those guys. I'll it didn't have Trevor Godfrey as Kano. I don't care if they're 90 years old. Roll those grandpas out there and let's do another God, you know, that movie. The and final fight between Sang Song and freaking Liu Kang <laughs> in the 95 movie was great. That's right. They yeah. should have just said... I didn't see that one, though, so I don't have, uh, I don't have any means of comparison. You want to know why I liked it? It's because Kung Lao was a character, right. and Kung Lao was, Kung you know, Kung Lao was my guy. What did Kung Lao do? He did the, the guy thing. with the flippy razor hat. Yeah. What did he do? What did in he the do? video games? Oh, I know what he did in the video games. I flipped what my did he hat do in the people. movie. Nothing. He was exactly. in it, though. He did nothing. <laughs> he was in it. All these great characters and their magical, mystical powers. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, Kung Lao's doing the flip thing. The hoobie gonna gonna go. So, that's James, how, how was your day? <laughs> how dumb these kids are watching this crap. These two on together. I want, I want dragon powers flying out of my crotch. That's what yeah. kids want? That's what that, fucking teenagers that's want what nowadays, kids want. I think that's in college when they start to want that. Yeah. Um, I say that's what kids want. Yeah, yeah, it, was, kids it, want? Was, it was about 17 uh, years uh, old for me. You uh, know, like. Kids. <laughs> <laughs> Movie was written also by Paul W. S. Anderson, and oh. this is where I want to say something. Go ahead, Ron. Proudly, as Proudly. it's yeah. the smash cut credit written and directed by Paul W. S. Anderson. That's right. He wanted to make sure, and he held it for 47 it, seconds. He did. It, it, it's, <laughs> I, it I notated that because I was like, he's. that's literally what Tarantino does. Yeah. No, I know. All he, he does that. It. That's the problem. That's I mean, what, he doesn't. He's a douche. Don't but even but pretend. We don't even. You, you know. Do you know. That. You know. Just go. He doesn't like Tarantino. <laughs> All right, we're going. He doesn't. Here, here's <laughs> why I want to get this in quick before we move on. We got a lot to cover. Is I, I I mentioned before I was mad when this movie came out because they I was wanting to see Chris Redfield and Jill Valentine all these people. Right. And I'm like, how on earth? And I've even had some people tell me and comment. I I guarantee you this guy hadn't played a single minute of Resident Evil before he wrote and made this movie. When the truth is actually he he blocked himself in a room for like three. weeks weeks and played it nonstop. Then after the fact was like, I want to write this movie. And they're like, are they optioning it? And got in after that. So he'd already played. It was actually all that anger placed at Paul Anderson's feet is misplaced because it was actually Capcom's decision. He had a script with Jill Valentine as the protagonist. And it was Capcom's decision to use a bunch of characters that were not in the game. They thought to themselves, and this is idiotic on their on their part, well, if they can just watch the movie, then they won't play the game. And so we have to give them a different plot and different characters because well, we have, otherwise they won't want to go watch or play the game. Well, what do you expect? What do you expect? They're Japanese. And I'm, like, I'm like, that's <laughs> stupid because here in America, if I like the movie, I'm like, I want to go play the game. Right? The movie's not interactive. Oh, man. <laughs> So all that <laughs> hatred that I had towards Paul Anderson, I have now been able to release upon the second viewing. It's my first time watching it since it came out. And now I can really? just throw all that at Capcom and go, you bunch of freaking morons. Ah. Give give this Tell us how you really feel, thought. James. <laughs> Don't well, it's fine. They they were like like we were saying. They realized it after the first one, and they're like, yeah, all right, start putting these characters in there. That's what they want to see. Yeah, it's fine. Movie starred. I, okay, last time she was in a movie was way back when we did Fifth Element, and I did this through the whole. That was episode, episode five, or nine, episode, I think, or episode 10, nine, or something like that. Uh, starred Mila Jovovich. Sure, Jovovich. Jovovich. Yeah. Oh, I did it. Yes. Good job. <laughs> you did it, buddy. I mean, you made it like one name. <laughs> I nailed it. See, I'm bad. She's it. definitely on Mount Rushmore of female ass kickers in yes. movies. Yeah, she starts off as a model and then goes into film, but doesn't do a bunch of rom coms and says she's like, let's just do action movies. Yeah, like, let's go. Yeah, uh, but I, I'm happy I nailed her name. All right, uh, Mickey Mikael Rod Mikael Rod Re. Oh, Michelle Rodriguez. Wow. Um, I was like, <laughs> really? Are trying to wow. say? <laughs> really? It's a joke. Oh, my I'm God. Yeah. Yeah. Another yeah. woman that's, that's awesome. Like a lead balloon. Just say Letty. <laughs> Mar <laughs> yeah. Martin Cruz and James Purfoy. Uh, and no one cares about those guys. James Purfoy is in my favorite movie of he all time. He has one great scene and one great movie, yeah, and does. that's it. And that's <laughs> that's his, his career. career. James uh, Purfoy is in your favorite movie of all time? Yeah. Night's Tale. A Night's Tale. 
Really? He's Prince Edward. I mean, I, I didn't yeah. know that. He has the he best scene. He lets scene. him out and he knights him. He gets him out of the stocks. Yeah. 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 Uh, you didn't watch that movie either because it wasn't directed. I by love Knight's Tale. Tale. Uh, <laughs> Knight's Tale is just good, <laughs> yeah. dumb, stupid fun. I it's, love a Knight's yeah, Tale. It's just yes. dumb and fun and I like it. Uh, budget for this movie was $33 million. Okay. It's a decent sized budget at the time. And here's why there's six of them. It made over $100 million at the box office after that first one. It did. And so mm. you know how Very financially go. successful. They're just like, well, let's go get five more in the pipe. Line. <laughs> Here we go. They realize all these movies combined total one point two billion dollars. Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> also so successful. Didn't pick up till the fourth one because that was the one that really that that oh. fourth one that came out in two thousand ten. That one that, that made the most money. That one yeah. in and of itself made like three hundred some million dollars at yeah. the worldwide box office. Yeah. No, it's Jeez. financially successful. Yeah. Critically, not so much. In fact, the critics uh, hated every single one of them. Every single one. <laughs> but I hated every single one of the critics movies. <laughs> They couldn't yeah. go back. They hated the first I, one, I, so they I just can't were stand like, the you know critics what? movies. Every zombie movie a critics ever made sucked. I mean, That's if the I critics say. were right, all the t- if the critics were good critics, we this podcast wouldn't exist. Thank you. That's true. Thank you for sucking. Is what thank we're you saying. for <laughs> sucking, so we can be better. Keep sucking. That's right. <laughs> movie is currently sitting at a six point six on IMDb, which Ooh, is too high for our. That's standards. above the threshold there. Which it ties it for the 22nd highest out of our 128 movies we've done. 22nd highest. Uh, tied with Me, Myself, and Irene and Strange Brew or the other 6.6 movies that we have okay. done. Uh, how it's, does, here's how it qualifies. How does Strange Brew get a 6.6? I do. It's trash. I know it's trash. I, I'll <laughs> gladly go back and t- say, once again, Dave Thomas sucks <laughs> and that movie's terrible. Wow. And I love Rick Moranis. I was going to say. Uh, no. Thirty-five percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Hey, all right, we've got. That's how it gets here. All right, yep. that qualifies because thirty only a third of the critics liked it, whereas two thirds of the audience did at sixty-seven percent for an audience score. So really, it's so, it's kind of like three out of four is good, and then there's that yeah, that yeah. fourth person that's like, I just don't like anything. Yeah. It's that one dentist that doesn't recommend the toothpaste. <laughs> <laughs> I always seem to find those dentists. Five out of six we dentists We said before, recommend. he's the fifth dentist. That other, We've yeah, that other dentist, dentist is like, before. nah, don't use that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, hey, look, thanks for listening to the show, and we appreciate that you're here. If you've been listening to Bad Movies Rule for a long time, uh, you know we have this Patreon that is essentially the foundation, the bedrock of what we do. It's a great community of people. It helps us be able to put out more and more content. So if you haven't checked it out yet, patreon.com slash badmovies rule we have three other podcasts that we do exclusively on there besides bad movies rule this will always be free and so if you just like listening to this show you're free to do that continue to do that but for those of you that want a little bit more check us out patreon.com slash bad movies rule and otherwise you know you guys have been uh, i can't believe we're approaching 150 episodes the listeners man some of you guys have been with us since the beginning you've been awesome the best thing that we could do is, as far as you, if you want to help us grow the show is to be a friend and tell a friend, right? To steal a line from another podcast I love. Be a friend, tell a friend. It's the best way to grow the show. Have somebody in your life that you know likes really dumb, stupid movies or people making fun of them Mm -hmm. or just handsome people like Bob Hauser and Ryan Farrell here, you know, Tell them to sign up, and they can see these guys' face at least once a month. <laughs> if they're on YouTube. Or yeah. if How they exciting. don't want to see his face, just listen to the audio version. That's fine. Go see my face. <laughs> Perfect. All right, guys. It's always a pleasure seeing your face, Bob. <laughs> you ready to pop yeah. this umbrella open? You're a liar. <laughs> Go. Honest, always Pop honest. this umbrella open. Yeah. It's the Umbrella Corporation. I know. Uh, yeah. The movie starts with a commercial about the um, the Umbrella Corporation is your the head favorite of Medicare and uh, all kinds of political insight. Political yeah. insight, and it's just this. It's Jason Isaacs. It is. It is a rather random cameo, like an Electra. I was, just, <laughs> I was thinking that as we watched it, I was like, "Oh my God, he was just an Electra for no reason." Right. Yeah. Here he is, and yeah. here he is in Resident Evil for Doing no reason. He's at the end of the movie too, in the. The face mask. He's Birkin. Yeah. Right? And which one? He has the Very face mask end. on he's at got, the you end. You don't see him. He's got the... Got the oh, end. yeah. He's the, yeah, he's the doctor guy. at the end. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Apparently, is a favor he did for his good friend, Paul Anderson. Yes. And, uh, but a he favor. goes through yeah. the whole thing with... <laughs> This is the Umbrella Corporation. But what people don't know is that on the flip side, they are in bioweapons and genetic, genetic experiments, experiments and military hardware. And this is the real umbrella, right? Right, right. And we kind of go into, as they're talking about this, a claw game. It's a scientist at a carnival claw game, like picking up these different viral, uh, you know, mm. contain. And at first of all, I'm like, okay, these guys never saw Vindicator because hey, this never <laughs> ends well. But they are like, okay, green one goes over here, blue one over here. And, we, and we're supposed to understand, basically, 
is that there's a horrific virus in the blue vial, okay? That once it's released, anyone, I mean, you know, because you've seen the trailer, if you watch the movie, that a zombie outbreak is going to happen. Mm -hmm. If you know anything about Resident Evil. Right. Yeah. Right. So we, a dude we can't, whose face we cannot see yet comes in, packs up a, you know, six green, six blue, takes one of the blue, super cash, just chucks it into the room. Mm Mm-hmm. Boom, it starts to go through the the ventilation system. He locks the door and is getting the hell out of Dodge before everybody's infected. Yes. But it looks like we're in some kind of office building. It looks nice. At first. Mm -hmm. Got the nice atmosphere. Looks like Amazon. Great view outside. Great view outside. (laughs) Skyline. (laughs) Looks like Amazon. Yeah. It'd be great. Just a bunch of prime prime drivers. <laughs> with boxes. Well, that's what I hear, that Amazon has like a scenery on their windows outside. Oh, do they really? Where, that's what I hear. Hmm. I, I never oh. set foot inside Amazon. I never plan to. I didn't know that. I will shovel rhino sh- before I ever fly to that place. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You really feel yeah, there you that's go. fair. <laughs> and you got, see all these lab guys getting trapped, and they're trapped, and there's like all these glass windows everywhere. Can we, can we talk about the spaz in the elevator for a second? Oh, please. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a group of people are also trapped in an elevator. <laughs> I gotta get out of here. <laughs> that that you, was a hey. really good adaptation. <laughs> <laughs> Look, key that moment, was... <laughs> key moment though. Yeah. His coffee spills on him. But some another unseen assailant. Unseen assailant walks James by. James Parvo knocked coffee on him. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Spoiler Just alert! Letting that out of the bag. <laughs> yes, I'm letting it out of the James bag. Purvoy. Good There's God! The, spoiled it already. <laughs> All right, James Purvoy knocks some coffee on the dude. <laughs> that guy, some British guy's a villain. Shocker, it's Resident Evil. Yeah, okay, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, but who, um, who even knows what any of them are? I was thinking about Remo Williams when I watched this. And you this never scene. really find out, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> You're on Remo Williams, right? Oh, yeah. When all these lab Remo. dudes are trapped in all these glass windows and stuff, I was like, if one of these guys just had a diamond in his tooth, they could get out of this place real easy, right? Remember Yes, Remo? Cause di- yeah, because diamond tooth guy. Smashed the dude's yep, face. I do remember that. <laughs> Through the window. And oh get out of there. gosh! Oh, yeah, it's the hardest substance on earth. <laughs> it is. <laughs> well, such a great scene. Anyway, I wish I'd been watching <laughs> Remo. Uh, all right, so all these guys, all these workers are trapped. The dude's trapped in the elevator. Just... They try to pry their way out, but something is watching them through the camera, which maybe you think is the guy that dumped the virus. But it's... is that what you thought? Yeah, because I hadn't seen this in twenty years. I remembered almost nothing. Oh, okay. You know? I had never seen this. Okay. Or play the video game. And I can say, I feel like I still don't really know anything about Resident Evil. That's it, folks. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> the end. Thank you, Paul Anderson. Yep. All Good right. Night. Awesome. <laughs> but it was what, like, I, I know nothing. I hate being the person that, like, asks questions oh, during movies. Yeah. Like, and I try not to be, but, like, I was like, do they ex- explain who that is? No. Nope. Do they, what is happening? He's like, well, just here's, watch. I'm like, okay. So this movie just it just started, went and ended. And I was like, okay. Yeah. Here's here's a Resident Evil, uh, zombie shoot gun at the end. That's that was the screenplay. <laughs> Paul W. Why Anderson say more turned word in, he when turned you in. were do trick. <laughs> he turned in four pages with one word on it each. Yeah. We, we, but it was but it was in like twenty five point font, so <laughs> it, it, it filled the page. Still. So just he has a screenplay like I do. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah, perfect. Exactly. Yes, perfect. zombie Absolutely. shoot gun. Mila Jovovich. We don't need it. <laughs> Mila Jovovich side boob. Mila. <laughs> yes. Yes. Shower. Really okay. Yes. Well, wet woman. We're getting there. <laughs> They're like, here's thirty thirty million dollars. So this is. She wore it well. Everybody, essentially, everybody she, in the elevator gets what killed. What or what? Exactly. Well, we we're, get yeah, we got a lot going. We're getting there. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, Jay. We're gonna get there, the and then you won't scene, have anything guys. to say because you won't have anything to say when we get there because you've said it all already. <laughs> <laughs> Shortest <laughs> podcast ever. So, so there's cameras. There's people, and there's yes. a red dot, yes. and it keeps cutting back and forth. And like, you yes. see that this camera system is watching all the scientists, and they're like, "There's right. no fire in here because the sprinklers are going off." Right, and they're trapped, and all the. And the elevator people are, are locking. Are, this lady half out of the elevator, and the yeah. elevator falls and chops her head off, and everyone's trapped and dying. Or you assume is everyone right? Dying. And no. then like the halon system goes off in the office, and everyone suffocates. Yeah. Never in a million years, if I was trapped on an elevator, would I ever think, "Yes, I'm going to climb out of this thing." Yeah. With the door, like, just never, just, never. How about that, you just pull I, her out? It's never ended well. And then she's like, pull me back in. Pull me back in. And everyone's like, what do we do? Well, the, the <laughs> Grab <bolt>. her legs. <laughs> pull her back in. And the, then, now, <laughs> now we meet Alice. I, the, the, what, Who? They, they never say her name. I was just going to say, Alice. I. it's funny that like she asked me. I was like, well, that's Alice. And she's so-and-so and so-and-so. Yeah. 
And then as the movie went on, I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, they never. Not once. No, not once. They never say yeah. her name. And also, like, what her purpose is, even. She, uh, like, nothing. I, I don't think she was asleep. I think this is just how she showers. Yeah. You know I mean, I, I mean, shower. Uh, yeah, I shower that way. Yeah, he comes and he's sobbing. Shower. And I walk in and I'm like, are you, what's yeah. happening? He's like, this oh, is just how I shower. We're never going to, we're going to pretend that <laughs> shower naps aren't a thing. I, Sure. You never once, and I like this water's warm. Let me curl up at the bottom of the shower. That's called I've a never bath, done that. James. <laughs> I've never done that. <laughs> Take a bath. <laughs> All right, fine. Have Alice. you? Have you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, rocking I, back and forth. Look, I have. I've yeah. totally shower nap before. Okay, well, I'm not even know. ashamed to admit it. On purpose. Perfect. Yeah. Get set up a lawn chair in there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. Well, I yeah, yeah, lawn like chair. Time. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Bus open a lawn chair. Vicodin. <laughs> Hot water. Wokey dokey. Okay. All right, so I she, learned something new about Ryan today. She wakes up. There's a phone number you can call, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm watching this with Dana, and we had just watched Fifth Element not that long ago, where she's wearing basically a napkin in that movie, too, right? And I'm just like... That's exactly what I thought. I was like, it's a napkin. She literally woke up with... Yeah. A, t- a shower a curtain. On yeah. Her. Well, a shower yes. curtain. Then later, later she also was wearing, wearing a napkin. A napkin. <laughs> right. She was well compensated. And so, yeah. 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 But... Mila, at least at this point in her career, had no qualms about just lying around nude because the Fifth Element, she that's the first time you ever see her, too. She appears nude in that tube mm-hmm. um, with Bruce Willis. Yep. Well, they're Eastern European, so they don't care about stuff like that. that. No, you're right. That's true. Uh, she wakes up. Fair. She walks into her bedroom. There's a dress on the bed. She's going through her drawers. There's like some fancy underwear, some lacy things, a Soviet-made Thompson M19. No big deal. Bombs. You know. As a secret <laughs> operative, I like that. As a secret operative myself, I, like I only also own a red dress and all boots. white, a machine gun, else. and all white everything else. <laughs> yes, and it's well, the, I have my napkins in my left drawer, and then I have my red ass kicking dress in the right drawer, and then I just have my knee high boots. She wore this dress. That's my whole boot. wardrobe. By the end of the movie, Gr- Grace, who watched the whole thing at the end, she goes, "I can't believe she's still wearing that dress." I'm like, yeah, she wore it the entire movie. Well, the dress actually like kind of changes too. A little bit. It's like the sheath or whatever you want to yeah. call it is like on the side. Not by the end. And then it's in the back. <laughs> and she was like, "Well, I can't kick much ass with this dress." And <laughs> you must have ripped it and pulled it aside. The quads, yeah. man. Quads. 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 I mean, yeah. There we go. <laughs> power of the quad give it up for the dress she wanders around for a while uh yes at, at with point, the same face i did laugh i did laugh so hard she <laughs> walks outside it's the dead of night or dusk or whatever and she as quiet as mouse hello and four thousand crows are holy shit. She disperse, feels, disperse. For the situation that she like woke up in, yes. she is really calm. Yeah. What's like, with millionaire? If she I, was if drugged. I, I okay. Real- she had to have been still pretty out of it because if yeah. I woke up in a shower somewhere that I don't remember, I don't remember who I am. Or yeah. where I and I'm, I would probably be panicking a That's little right. bit. That's right. She has amnesia. She's, She's literally just, just like, like, oh, I guess this is my house. Oh, right. Pretty nice. And then I'm gonna go outside. <laughs> What's with these I'll people put... leaving the doors open, letting fall leaves fly in? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pouring a bar. <laughs> yeah. Shut the door. <laughs> Shut the door. <laughs> <laughs> These leaves are really scary. Yeah. Run. All Bob thinks about when he sees that is our is our father, you know. <laughs> what the hell's going on in here? Shut, shut, the, shut, shut the, the, door. the door, you idiots. <laughs> All right, a SWAT team busts in at the same time. Well, first Matt tackles her into the back into the Some guy. Some guy. We don't even His know. His name is Matt. Yeah. The whiniest little Guy, guy of all time, dude. I'm a cop, guys. Stop! The SWAT team comes in and starts trying to like. I like, I like how he's in the house and he like grabs her and it's like this. You know, the music starts up and you still really don't know at all what is happening. We know nothing. No nothing. But it's just like. (laughs) And it's like what? And then you know, like you just obviously they couldn't afford a helicopter, so they just like shine. The lights through the window, yes, you know, yes, and yeah. yeah, and they put in the sound effect. There's definitely a helicopter out here. <laughs> There's definitely a helicopter <laughs> out here, guys. Can't you fan. hear it? That's what yeah. the leaves were doing. <laughs> That's what the leaves are for. Oh, it's a hovering a helicopter here. blowing yeah. leaves in. <laughs> <laughs> She's onto us, sir. She's onto us. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, disperse. There it is. <laughs> See? Did you right? hear it? If there was a helicopter over your house, your <laughs> is getting knocked off walls. That's right. and oh, seriously. Yeah. At that level, yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah. The SWAT team comes in. They're tackling Matt, who's like, "I'm a cop. I'm a cop." And they try to look him up. You know, try to look him up. Well, I'm just, I'm new. I might not even be in the system yet. Okay. I just transferred. <laughs> they probably don't even have me on file yet. Right. I have a girlfriend in Canada. You wouldn't know her either because she lives up there. <laughs> I, was, I was literally like, "What a stupid thing to say." <laughs> That's what I'm gonna say if I'm ever getting arrested. And they'd be like, "Oh, okay. You know, I'll let you yeah. know. I, I believe right. you." Well, <laughs> they bring him along. He's the only one they keep in cuffs. Alice, they're like, "Report, report, soldier." Because she's an operative that works for them, and she doesn't know And she's once again this. just like... She's like, what? What? <laughs> blink, 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 blink. What? Yes, yeah. I forgot this is a podcast. You can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> you so did, that's why, I, per- that's why I, I did the blink, blink. James did the commentary for me. Thank you, James. <laughs> blink, blink, blink. And they're like, all right, we have to go, you know, because... Well, well, initially they're like, why is she out of it? And the guy says, well, the home, the home's primary defense was activated, and so she's probably still feeling the effects of it. Of the so, sedative. Of the sedative. So yep. we, all we know at this point is the house... Is, which is the cover for the entrance to the high, which we're going to learn about here in a second. What? Has some kind of countermeasure that if something is breached, everyone is gassed. That's why she ended up awake in the shower, so that they don't remember anything. Sure. And sometimes it can last an hour, a day, a week. We don't know. If I got gassed, you, you know what? gassed eating a cheeseburger, I'd be pissed. Did you wake up cheeseburger <laughs> like David Hasselhoff when he was all drunk in that tent? Remember? Yes. He was like, <laughs> <laughs> Report. Report. Uh, at what? least I what? don't <laughs> have this cheeseburger. <laughs> Report. <laughs> F you. You wouldn't be upset. You'd be like, oh, sweet. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's That's what like, we should do. It's like second meal. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's what we should do in our movie. <laughs> <laughs> There's never been a zombie movie where someone wakes up like that. So I'm saying. That's true. You know, like in here, she's all just like, what? With a cheeseburger. Yeah. What? Just, what? <laughs> And then you got like 28 right. days later where Killian Murphy just wakes up naked and yeah. is just like, hello. That I love that opening 20 minutes of 28 days later, though. Well, when you compare 28 days later opening to Resident Evil opening. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So Must they go, they're like, we've actually seen go, that one. <laughs> we do go into the hive. She's, Matt's like, you can't do this to me. And this is where we see Michelle Rodriguez for the first time unmasks himself and goes, blow me. I love just it. Tosses him into the next yeah. room. Yeah. Love that woman. Like, Bro, Same. her, She's a she has ass. a perpetual, she, she has the most angriest, scariest resting face. And, and I gotta even She think. is the definition of RBF. Yeah, uh, for sure. Face. For like, sure. She def, like, I would never, I don't think I'd ever talk to her. She'd be like, mm, nope, nope, right? nope. Even, I don't, I, I'm looking at her, every time she's walking around, it's like this. And I said to Dan, like, I don't even think she's mad right now. I think that's just her face. It's just her face. She's awesome. It's funny that it's it's very apparent even in this next scene coming up. Yeah. Where they're you know they're getting on the train right. So now yeah. they've gone down the stairs. There's an underground train. And there's take an underground the train that's yeah. gonna go to the hive. Yeah. And they're all wandering around. They're like, oh, power's disconnected. Someone unplugged the train. Someone unplugged the train. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, she gets under there, and goes, Pink. yeah, yeah. Ching. But even like. Ching. Like her, like she puts the flashlight in her mouth, and she's just got that scowl. Even as she's like, like just connecting power couplings, plugging things. Uh, this is my job. She, she hates having things in her mouth. What's that <laughs> noise? Oh. What's that noise under here? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, is she later on she's shooting zombies. I'm like, just look at them, man. You're like you could kill yeah. a zombie with. <laughs> she looks at him and incinerates. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> hey. hey, stop and apologize. On the off chance <laughs> that Michelle sorry. Rodriguez listens, though. Yeah. We love you. We love you. We do love you. Totally love you. Yes. And I will, I'll take this moment now to say this. James Cameron. (laughs) Email Bob. Email Bob. The James Cameron thing with this movie. No. James Cameron, it said in an interview and and listed it on his, uh, I can't remember what it was, his Reddit. Um, It's a guilty pleasure movie for him. Yeah. Because uh, he goes, his direct quote was something along the lines of watching Michelle Rodriguez lurk around like some kind of wild animal for this whole movie. The movie's a guilty pleasure. I love Resident Evil. He loves this movie because of her points and then stuck her in Avatar yeah. Yes. later that day. Right, right. Because like, right. she was in Avatar. Yep. And considering the character that he had in Aliens of Vasquez, mm-hmm. it seemed like she's like the like the next generation's Vasquez. In this movie, that's kind of the same kind of character she's and she's actually And she's actually Hispanic. And, right. And where Vasquez, Vasquez was, was not. Doesn't. Yeah. But I'll tell they you. They just spray tan the hell out of you her. You know, Cameron likes Mexican. those they kinds did. of the camera likes those kinds of women because yes, look at Vasquez. And so of course he watched this movie and was like, this chick's awesome. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> if only if only she could have played Vasquez. <laughs> right. she, only, she wasn't twelve I'm years gonna, old when I'm that happened. Put her in my movie. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oh my gosh! All right, so all the praise to Michelle Rodriguez. She's awesome in everything she's in. It's true. Um, it is true. It's true. All right, so they go downstairs. They're taking this underground train. Uh, they get it all plugged in. They find out as they're rolling, 
that there's some passed out dude on the outside of the train uh, that they, they open <laughs> and it's James Purvoy who just falls in asleep. I'm like, bro, hung onto a train while he was sleeping. That perfect amazing. hair, perfect after, perfect <laughs> yeah. five o'clock shadow, perfect leather jacket. My daughter and my wife were like, oh, what's up with this guy? He's hideous. You know, I want to know how the sedative got him. Well, it's in the train tunnel where he was, right? I guess. And he does say later on he didn't know that they had defenses outside the hive, right? That's why he got caught. Sure. But I guess it goes all the way up to the house. You know, if Rick T. Foster directed this film, you'd have five hours of uncut <laughs> footage of how the virus <laughs> knocked out James you know, Purvoy. Speaking of Rick T. Foster, <laughs> yes, he would have been a good fifth guest because he is a huge Resident Evil video game nut. I've offered him. And he is he hated the amount movie. of times that me and him have talked about this movie and oh. how much he hates it. Oh, it's well. just, oh, he, yeah. he hates everything. <laughs> well, we'll get him on for one of the sequels that we yeah, have we'll with him. Rick, Rick <laughs> yeah, we have plenty more coming. Honestly. <laughs> yeah, can't uh, wait. Passed out, dude. They give him. They wake him up. They slap him in the face. Whatever. Like, get up. Uh, yeah, they wake yeah. up. They're like, how many fingers am I holding up? He's like, three. All right, he's not a zombie, sir. He, he said no. <laughs> like, that's a test or something. They know that he's not. Um, <laughs> well, he didn't try to eat them. So follow my light. That's also, that's also yeah. a good test. <laughs> they get down to the end of the line, and this, I was like, oh, thank God. So the guy that plays one is the name of the commander of the squad, played by uh, Mr. Salmon, fish guy. Com Colin Salmon. Salmon. Colin Salmon, yeah. yeah. Colin fish. Salmon. Does one of the I coolest like expo dumps ever. This is the expo dump, right? He's like, I'm like, oh, thank God. He's like, where are we? He's like, let me explain. And he goes, show them the hive to the other guy. And I'm like, yes, show me the hive. For God's sakes, what's happening? I just like that. I, I love show that. Show me something. <laughs> show me. This show is, me a nip. God dang it. At this point, too. Okay, yes. so we, we watched this late on Friday night. Yeah. And well past my bedtime. <laughs> so I'm just like, huh? Uh, uh, what's happening? Yeah. What's going on? <laughs> yes. I just felt like, oh, see, I was so, uh. No, it's all good. Don't worry about Daredevil. He can, he can survive. Uh, like, the hive is an underground facility oh, with that umbrella. God. It's a half mile deep and it houses all of its scientists and it's like 500 R &D. people. And it's a, like six layers that go down. It looks like a honeycomb of a hive. Oh. Kind of. Wow. Is that why they called it that? Yes. What? And it's way underground. <laughs> and all of the windows that you saw before were actually projections because people are working underground. And so it's where this virus outbreak happened. And now they've been tasked to go in it's, and figure out what happened. The whole the whole place went dark or whatever. That's the right. plot of the first video That's game. That's the plot of the first video game. Great. And here's that go through the whole really... thing and then it's like, everybody would... got that? Okay. Like the audience no, on board? No, we don't got it. <laughs> <laughs> I well, don't, don't, don't play the first video game because that's the same exact approach. <laughs> as, they as, don't tell you anything until like they really don't. nine <laughs> hours in. Like, as you all are explaining, yeah. like, and they're tasked to go in and see what I'm like, oh, yeah, that would have been great well, to Ryan's know. Well, Ryan's sitting over there with his head tilted, a little angry. What's what's on your mind about the hive? I know we're going to be zooming. Go ahead. No, no, no. We're, we're going. Let's just okay. go. Because I, I love expo dumps. Like, you know, I, like, I love oh. expo dumps like everybody. He also, part of the expo dumps, he turns to Alice. He's like, also, you're an operative and your marriage was a fake. Because right. she had saw a picture of her and James Purvoy, who was asleep on the train, and that she thought they were married, but it sure. was all a ruse. They were guarding the entrance to the tunnel. Yeah. That's why they were stationed at that house together. Uh, and then she had sex flashbacks. She did. Uh. Maybe not all of it was fake. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if you're... If you're, I mean... Look. Come on. You're married. You're, if you're stuck in this hive. If thing, you're married you <laughs> and you're CIA operatives or yeah. secret operatives or special operatives in any mission ever, and it's like, you guys got to pretend to be married, yeah. like, you might as well just do it. Is that part of the job? <laughs> Never well, send Ryan to well. Cambodia. So like just, it's, <laughs> it's like, you know, hey, it's in the contract. Like, let's just have some fun while we're at it. But like, who's going to know that you're having fun? Nobody. Them. Well, what you two will know. It, it makes well, right, but I'm you're saying. pretending for other people. They don't need to know that you're having sex. If we're going to go on a mission together and we got to pretend like we're in a relationship, like we're putting our lives on the line and all this. In the off time, let's just right. let's just chill. At Netflix least, and chill. We might die tomorrow. Let's just you know. She does go up later to James Purvoy after she has her <laughs> sex flash. I go, yeah. So you don't remember anything? Do you remember anything? Like, that's, that's, <laughs> true. that's exactly how she says it too. And so, then he's like, no, and she's yeah. like, me either. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thank God you don't remember. <laughs> All right. One of the operatives, Kaplan, I love Kaplan. Dude, Kaplan's the best. He just goes, Kaplan the Red Queen, is the best. The Red Queen knows we're here. This is where we figure out that there's actually an AI that controls the hive called the Red Queen. 
that these operatives don't know about the viral outbreak. They think that the out, the AI went rogue and killed everybody in the facility. Right. They're here to destroy the AI. As as one points out that right. he says four Once hours again, ago I... <laughs> four hours ago, Red Queen went homicidal. That's right. Why? Why? We don't know. Don't know. We're tasked with shutting her down and rebooting her mainframe. I'm right. Pretty sure don't I use the elevators. To, I just don't need to that. watch this movie again. <laughs> <laughs> Be like, oh, I understand this movie uh. so much better now. <laughs> <laughs> they they walk through these labs, and this is one of the other funniest things that happened to me in the movie. As they walk the lab, the, they get to the window of the labs, and the labs, the windows are filled with water. And like, they're like, the can top. you go check the flood damage? That's exactly. The room is filled with water to the ceiling. It's spraying out <laughs> at face level. Yeah. It's yeah. like. You check and see if the whole lab's flooded. Yeah, can you see if it, you see what the damage is? Like, <laughs> oh well, I like, clearly <laughs> it's very bad. Um, as the person goes to check the flooding, somebody asks, "Why did the AI do it? Um, you know, why did it go rogue?" <laughs> I mean, he was thinking like uh, somebody in this office clicked on something in Facebook they weren't supposed to. <laughs> um, some post in Nigeria it or and it got hacked. <laughs> right. You know? <laughs> and now this is what's happening. It was a phishing email. <laughs> Yeah, it was a whack her up, <laughs> red one. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we, anyway. get, we get those at work. They try and get us. Oh, yeah. They try and trick us. Right. What? I, uh, yeah, so I, I got an email. You're a blue collar guy. You don't even need to know. Not an evil AI, but it's a co- It's a corporate thing. Like So for email <laughs> security, they will send you emails on purpose to try and get you to click the link to see if you'll do it and then to see if you'll do it and if you do you have to get enrolled in a cybersecurity course that you have to take oops and if you report it they're like thank you this was a part of our phishing email campaign good job being <laughs> safe <laughs> after all this nonsense <laughs> the next best one Serious. is bob's face is what oh. <laughs> look just for everybody out there bob doesn't even know how to use a computer you know what an email is. He right? doesn't know what it is. <laughs> he, uh, yeah, I know what an email okay. is. It's, um, it's like a box with a picture. Wow. <laughs> After she explains why we think the eye is, then the next funniest thing happened. The dude actually comes back and goes, it's flooded, sir. <laughs> <laughs> While they're sitting there with the water still spraying out, they're like, oh, yeah. crap, all right, I guess we're going the other As way. As he's standing in the water, like, on his there's face. There's nasty-looking like, water, and they're just all... And there's a body floating in it right up to the glass. Well, yeah. that's one of our... Yeah, one of the... First jump scares of the of you know right. the body kind of floats up and boom on the thing and everyone's like oh oh dang oh see those poor bastards poor bastards yeah. well Michelle Rodriguez they're like all right let's move out yeah and Michelle Rodriguez is like oh, poor bastards and then they all walk as down soon the hallway as she leaves they literally don't see it. not even like yeah. not even that they've been down the hallway for two seconds right and the body eyes boom, open eyes open and hits the, the gla- hand on the glass because this like, is a zombie movie people right but you know special operatives don't you think you would have been like whoa what was that. <sighs> Whoa. But anyway. What was that sound? Uh, Alice uh, <laughs> and them start heading into the Red Queen's like hive area where her brain is, so to speak. Before they do that, they gotta go down the stairs to dining hall B. It's very clearly marked that on the on the, the super, scan, yeah, the schematic. Super awesome graphics mm-hmm. of these. Remember the mansion before they went down? Yes. The oh gosh, the <laughs> CGI was incredible in this movie. <laughs> was awesome. Okay. It wasn't bad. You know, you have a touch of uh I know I'm saying it's great. I, I, I know you it. just happen to have a touch of facetiousness. Oh, you're picking up on that. That's good. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> CGI was fine. Congratulations. For 2002, the CGI was, was fine. fine. Uh, for the year it was, it was fine. It was okay. fine. For a 3D graphic hologram, yeah. like for a hologram schematic, yeah. I was. I thought it was very good. Yeah, but if if Escape from L.A. looks better than your movie, that's... I disagree. Good. I would um, disagree. I think Resident Evil <laughs> looks better than Escape from L.A. Yes, I'm, just, a I'm fan. talking specifically of this scene. Regardless, they get down in the dining <laughs> hall. It doesn't look like a dining hall unless like people are on the menu because it's like all these like uh, tanks that are clearly gestating horrific creatures. Yes, yes. Inside <laughs> that nobody thinks to like look through the peephole in any of these. One kind of starts to, and you kind of start to see what's in there. And then someone grabs him and goes, "Get away from that thing!" Yeah, oh, that was Alice. Alice There's, looks through the glass. Yeah, Alice through thing. the looking glass. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, Speaking of Alice, Alice is just, for this whole first half of the movie, just wandering around yeah. without a gun. Well, that, she she, don't also, need no she gun. also just ends up like by herself randomly. All the time. Like the group's just walking along, and then Alice is just like, where's she? Where is she? Over there. At this point, she doesn't know she's an operative with any sort of skills. She's just like, la, 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 I don't have mm-hmm. a gun. I'm just going to wander away from this heavily armed SWAT team. Uh, she just trusts the situation. She does. She's just like, well, I'm here, so I guess I'm supposed to be. I'll just walk around. Eventually, half the team yeah. stays because Matt is still like, 
me, 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 I'm handcuffed, let me out, because they still have the guy that said he was a cop handcuffed as a prisoner. And so they're like, all right, look, Michelle Rodriguez, you're very intimidating. Keep whiny boy here in the dining hall with the, <laughs> You're very with, intimidating. You know, Just JD. Oh, gosh, JD. JD sucked. You didn't like JD? No. JD. Oh, I can't wait to talk about what happened to JD oh later. My it was one gosh. of my favorite things. Anyway. Really? The other half of the team. on JD. Salmon and three uh, expendable soldiers. And You're not expendable. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite literally, his name is One. Yeah. He's the yep. commander. His yes. name is One. Yes. Medic is just called Medic. Yep. And then it's literally Commando One and Commando Two. Yeah. So it's One <laughs> and JD. One and Two and, and Medic. And then Kaplan and Alice. And the six of them go to the hive mind where the where the AI is at. Uh or the rave tunnel that they have to walk through in order to get <laughs> the rave tunnel yeah. to the thing. Okay. Worst rave I've ever oh. been to. <laughs> so everybody except only Alice and Kaplan stay back because he's he's the hacker guy and he's got to be at the computer. He's the computer guy in the chair. The, he's the Wallaby. man in the chair. He's the guy. <laughs> he's hacking the doors open so they can get into the Red Queen, right? And right as the four of them get in there, the door shuts and traps the four of them in there and all the rave lights come on and they're just like, all of a sudden, they're in the worst game of Beat Saber of all time, right? It's just like... <laughs> <laughs> these laser grids. Yeah. Just these- cutting them down. Laser goes dead across it, neck level across the whole thing, and oh, a duck, and this one's like, huh? Yeah. What? <laughs> medic. <laughs> medic, medic. Yeah. And medic turns around like, what's that? Oh. She had plenty of time to duck. Plenty of time. Yeah. Laser yeah, takes yeah. her head off. I mean, she wasn't I don't as... think she would have helped put yes. any body parts back on as the medic anyway. So. Just duck, lady. Might as well she wasn't her. headstrong. strong. <laughs> 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 ah. Sorry. Beep. <laughs> <laughs> they're dodging lasers like it's golden eye in there and all of us and all alice is doing is like if you're kaplan do it open the door get it do something. i'll tell you this get this... the door open and i'm like stop yelling at that him that is what i said i'm like this <laughs> poor guy like this hurry! Is... <laughs> this is why kaplan hack. is the coolest character because he's just like i'm trying and everyone's like open the door they're dying in there right. like i know <laughs> i know Shut up. i'm aware yeah. <laughs> they're just she's just yelling at him meanwhile and 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 one the the main guy mr fish is dodging every laser. The other dudes are getting sliced up. He's dodging everything. He's like, what's up? How many lasers you and got? And this, this tunnel was like, F you. <laughs> just, and oh then my the God. lattice just appears, and he's like, son of a bitch. And then he gets minced like he's cute steak. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, kind of, it's a cool effect, actually. Uh, look, it's a cool scene. All, to, all together, I love this scene. It's a cool scene. He does the perfect but, plank on the upper. Yes, <laughs> that exactly. Was pull up Dude, perfect does the epic plank pull up. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. He was like, he like, was kind of being a badass. And I was like, was. all right. I was, I, was like, I was like rooting for him. I was yeah. like, oh, maybe he'll make yeah. it through. And then, yeah, that. No. <laughs> and then she escalated She it was so literally quickly. just like, nope. She didn't even go from like one laser to two laser. I thought maybe he could try and dodge two at a time. She's just like, it was the equivalent of her picking up her ball and going home. Like, fine, I don't want to play with you anymore. And just 9,000 lasers down the middle of the <laughs> yep. thing. Like, just spiraling. Like, yeah, yeah, lattice. Literally a right. laser lattice just right. spiraling. Yeah. Yeah. Felt I, bad for that guy. Well, I, well, it is a cool scene. Yes. My thought is just like, well, okay, so that, why don't you just do that in the first place? Red Queen. Like, <laughs> because she likes to play. You got these people. four people coming down the hallway. I don't know. And it's like, all right, I'm just gonna throw one at neck level to see what happens. And then it's like, oh, I can actually, I can actually adjust the neck level one. Yes. Oh, yeah. Because the one guy tries to went, jump. Right. <laughs> she starts it low, and then they jump, and like it's cool. But she's just, like, I knew yeah. that's what you were gonna try and do. She's a cheater. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> she <laughs> plays a dirty. Uh, it's, it's, it happens when you play a game like that with a nine-year-old hologramic. Red Queen, <laughs> right? <laughs> Seriously, Nine kids are savages, man. They're that savages. That girl's creepy. <laughs> I want to play the laser game. Finally, <laughs> uh, Kaplan hacks the door open, and there's just literally a pile of people meet in the hallway that yeah. got, uh, walk through. And him and Alice are able to get through into the hub where uh, the Red Queen consciousness is. The mainframe. I don't know yeah, if I would have ever walked through there. The main. Thing. Her defenses are down. Yeah, you said that already. Right. And well, he had <laughs> now. There's beef he stew a human it. on the floor. He hacked through it with his. He's got a little forearm computer. Like it's like a Chromebook attached to your forearm. Like right there, he can hack stuff with. He's My Apple Watch Shepherd took tool. her down. He does. He does have the Commander Shepard tool? <laughs> it's a pre Mass Effect. An entire laptop <laughs> strapped to his arm. <laughs> 
he's able to they're able to shut down the well first of the little red holographic representation of the red don't queen. do it don't understand if you do this it's gonna be real bad isn't it what? Yeah. <laughs> that was not good <laughs> I, know, I can't do Would it. Would you like some spotted dick? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is, it a, is it an addition in England? In, in, I don't know. In England? England. I don't know. In England. What, what happens here actually is she is legitimately giving them good advice, the little computer demon child. <laughs> uh, yes, she is. But they don't know that. They no. think she's homicidal. She's like, uh, don't shut me off because it's going to be real bad for everybody. And, but she she could have been more specific, I feel like. But then there wouldn't have been a movie. They would right. have been like, oh, good idea. All right, we'll, we'll leave. <laughs> right. So if she was end. just like, by the way, there's a zombies and a virus down here, so you guys should yeah. just leave. Because the, her power system is <laughs> keeping that all contained. Right. So they shut her down, and then all the doors open, and now the zombies are out. Roaming. Or roaming. Okay. Oh, yeah, and the, the doors open in yeah. the water. Not, the water not in the comes. area where they are yet, but in the facility at In long. the facility. Right, yeah. right. So, yeah, to paint the picture. So We're these cutting two, through to this montage yeah. through the facility, and right. the doors open, and you see some shadows on the on the wall. That's right, that's right. Yeah. And the two of them uh, go back to join the others, Michelle Rodriguez and Whiny Matt, you and all do. the people that are down in Dining Hall B, right, to get the team back together. And eventually the zombies start to kind of come out towards them. And at first there's just this one girl looks like she's dressed like a scientist and Rain, uh, Rain is Michelle Rodriguez's character. Rain's like, ma'am, it's okay, we're here to help you. And she gets bit right on her hand and she, ugh, like, punches her in the face. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yes. And, I would have done more than punch her in the face. If you and then JD bit comes the over hand. like, what's go- what's going on? She's like, crazy. Do we need JD over here to solve this problem? JD seems like the guy that talks about himself in the third person. Yeah, I used to be a <laughs> junior varsity quarterback. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Back then my name is Todd. That's right. <laughs> exactly. And now it's Kyle. <laughs> now it's Kyle. And he tries I was on a demolition man. He's like Tell the zombie to lay down and put its hands behind its head. Like yes. this is what he's like trying to get the zombie to comply. Okay. No one can see it. It's just like, I know. Yeah, they're like <laughs> oh, uh, stay back. She's resisting. Please, stay back. Yeah. back. She's resisting. Yeah. Stop resisting. <laughs> Mel Vandy would have tackled that. Yeah, Mel <laughs> would have had it. The <laughs> yes. They do a ping, 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 Has, ping. And, and then when all the zombies start coming out, they all start I, shooting them everywhere but the head. But, I'm like, try the head. Hold on. You've already look, wasted so much. Michelle right, Rodriguez right. gave us one of the coolest lines in the whole movie. I was going to say, yeah. look, because we're we're, right. this is one of the coolest lines. Because yeah. JD is shooting her with his little handgun in the, He's legs. Like, in the legs, and then he shoots her center mass. Well, that's what he was taught to. Yeah. And they both then, do, boom. him and Rain. Well, but yeah. the, the thing is, smash cut to Rain, machine gun, just gunning her down. Zombie <gasps> flies backwards. She wouldn't stand JD, down. JD says, like, I shot her five times. How is she still standing? Chain standing now. <laughs> <laughs> love right, it is. Rodriguez. I love Michelle Rodriguez. No, no, it's yeah. it's fantastic. Uh, but when zombies appear everywhere and they're like shooting everywhere but the head, I'm just saying, what has none of these people ever shot a human person before or know what a zombie is? This is annoying to me. When you shoot a human well, person, you're supposed to shoot them center mass. I understand that, but. It's the, then, t- then put that to the side, then fine. Have you ever seen a zombie movie? Bo- Are we supposed to assume in every zombie universe when they start off that all of these exist free of any of their own zombie lore or movies or anything? Right, like we are set... Yeah. This movie is set in a universe in which nobody knows what a zombie movie exactly. is. Exactly. Or once you've like unleashed 30 bullets into their abdomen, maybe you think, you know what? I'm going to try to shoot him in the head. Yeah. <laughs> infinity ammo is out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, My infinity ammo just oh, ran no. out before I was going to try the head. Ridiculous. You know, Kaplan had infinity ammo, so. Dude, they're all shooting all these zombies. There's, all, there's like a hundred of them now. Uh, uh, Kaplan runs over to the door and James Purvoy is standing there and he's like, you waited? He's like, I didn't know the code. So Kaplan starts to put up the code. He's like, it was like, Kaplan, get the door open! Hurry up! <laughs> they're all yelling at him again. <laughs> zombies, they're shooting zombies. Then JD walks over, runs over, gr- like yells at Kaplan again. Kaplan, his all he does is get yelled at. Yeah, okay. poor guy gets yelled at all the Finally, time. Finally, JD, because he's a douche, just yanks him off of the thing and goes, you tell me what the code is, I'm going to put it in. Like, wouldn't that take a million times longer? Yeah. I want to know. 
JD doesn't know how to read. <laughs> just just let Kaplan do it. He was already in the middle of doing it. Maybe just stop screaming. What? What? Uh, that was the thing. Like, how did Kaplan all of a sudden end up? And then he's just like standing there with a six shooter. I know. Most just, powerful handgun in the world. <laughs> <laughs> he's Kaplan's just standing there with a six shooter, just constantly like shooting, 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 shooting. I'm like, man, you, that's like. 35 bullets. It's, right. been, it's been gone for It's been gone, man. This is why Alice decided. doesn't need a gun. <laughs> this. I'm, I'm not, I don't mean to get so bent out of shape, but wouldn't it be a way harder when you're surrounded by zombies to pull off the person who knows the code and is attempting to punch it in for them to then tell it to you and so you could do it? Now you've created a second person you have to relay it to. So it worked. So what you're saying uh, no. is <laughs> that this is another one of those writing standpoint things. No, I'm saying the guy's a D-bag for doing it. I'm not talking <laughs> about the writing. I'm talking about in-universe. In uni- what in universe, idiot does this? In-universe, the guy's a D-bag. <laughs> in the writer's room, Paul W.S. Anderson's like, well, I need an excuse to not kill Kaplan right now because I need him for the rest of the movie. Right. But but true. I also need to have an elevator open. Right. With, so he finally gets it open. Yes. He's like, uh, what is it he said? Oh, he, no, no, hold on. I got it right here. Open it, open it. What's go? Oh, he goes. He turns to me. He goes. See how easy that was to Kaplan. And I'm like, you. <laughs> wow. Right. You got some mad like because he's anger been, towards he's JD every, over there. He's everyone's being a jerk to Kaplan. Okay. Alice started yelling about the rave cave. Now he's getting yelled at about the door. <laughs> <Rave> he's <laughs> trying to get the freaking door open, and then he has to like it's bad enough you ripped him off and did it yourself, and then you have to turn back and go. You see how easy that was. <laughs> <laughs> You're so dumb. So, so when the doors open and I've now never we have, seen oh. so many white people in an elevator before. <laughs> and yeah. 4,000 zombies. <laughs> yes. <come laughs> this is a good, like, good God. <laughs> I was clapping. I was like, yeah, eat them. Tear them apart. Wait, wait, wait. So uh, were those just the people that were trapped in there? Yeah, those were, were just the, I think so. I feel like there was a lot more of them when it opened. <laughs> there was. It yeah. looked like a saltine cracker case. <laughs> <laughs> It was nuts. <laughs> it's like they multiplied while they were in there. Yeah, yes. they're reproducing. Like, well, uh, 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 if you're on the job, uh, you know, you might as well oh, just yeah, do might it. As well just do it, right? Yeah, yeah if we're operatives, we might as well. <laughs> while all this is going on and it's total chaos and people are getting eaten and there's zombies everywhere, whiny ass Matt says to himself, that was a perfect time to try to escape. And He's so he, humping the crate. He, he grabs, before that, he grabs the keys. <laughs> Somebody had dropped those cuff keys, yeah. which he grabbed. And so he's trying to now, he's on his butt, and he's trying to scooch back away from a zombie while trying to undo his I got to say, while the zombie's being, on fire. Yeah, then, not being bitten by the zombie in that moment is like my number one priority. <laughs> what happened to the cool <laughs> trick of like, flip like, your feet God, late, like you're, gotta, remember that right. trick? That oh, you think Matt's capable of doing you do anything? flip underneath, and then you're doing like, what's up? Yeah, that oh, you could definitely do that. Require why, Matt. why did he not just do that? Matt because has, he's dumb. It's that flat top haircut. <laughs> son of a son of it a shaved milkshake. shaved off part of his brain. You did you see those deltoids? He I didn't know, care he about had his no deltoids. Chance. He was the worst. He had no chance he of was, doing that That actor trick. was the worst crow in that franchise. Ooh, I know. Was terrible. I was going to say Eric Mobius as the crow. Oh, in, that's his crappy that way, name. Matt was the crow? Yeah, he played in, in the third in, crow movie. In the crow salvation, uh, he's the main character. Oh, shut up. Yeah. He was the that's worst. Terrible. He's, he's the worst. He's by far the worst All right, well, here's the I worst. I like how your hands are still behind your back. Yeah, because I was halfway through explaining this. It's okay. So he's scooching along on his back or on his butt trying to unlock his cuffs, and he goes over a grate. And he drops the keys into a grate in the floor, and I just giggle like, ah! <laughs> like, I'm like I'm so happy you can't get out it of these. Sucks yes. to suck. So he tries to reach through the grate, and his fingers can get about a half of an inch past the grate, and he gets the keys. He does get I, them somehow. I'm I like, can't even get my kid's toothbrush out of the sink when they drop it down the sink. I'm like, <laughs> how did this guy that, that do that? Is that while, great? While like kicking at a zombie. Right. So is the grate a half an inch above a floor? Why is the grate there? What is yeah? What's it for exactly? If it's Maybe. that shallow that you could fish it out with this much clearance? Maybe it's yeah. just for moisture runoff. It's for moisture runoff. Yeah. It's no. Yeah. It's for yeah. people Only to Farrell need would know that. in an action sequence <laughs> to drop their keys down. And, and I've learned a lot in the last bro, 11 years. This is how much this is how much finger came up through the like that much. Literally, yeah, it was look, like to his first it's knuckle. Li- literally to his first knuckle. A like, good oh, got him. So I mean, maybe he, if he half, had nails maybe. like mine, it might have might have been. So he uh, only claws. went knuckle deep then, huh? That's right. He went knuckle deep. Yeah, yes. knuckle deep. Gets the keys. Knuckle out of deep the in the grate while kicking at a flaming zombie. <laughs> Because the grate was also underneath something. Right. Under a table. It was like, yeah, the grate was under a table, so now Matt's under a table kicking out a flaming Ugh. zombie. I mean, you know, come on. It's just too much to hope that he wouldn't get eaten, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> 
It was a heck of a circumstance for him to get through. Dang. Meanwhile, <laughs> blast thing before they get out of there is the cartooniest looking monster busts out of one of these tanks. Oh my god. The liquor. Yes, which looked better oh, later yeah, that's in the what movie. It was, yeah. All the scenes later, I thought it looked yeah. pretty good. But this first the shot of it coming out was, that was like the worst shot of it. Fully animated. Yeah. Yeah. Where some of it was practical. They had a the practical mm -hmm. liquor mm -hmm. for certain shots. But yeah, it was rough. But the liquor, it's important to announce, has been unleashed. Long. I actually found the DVD of it, the 2002 oh, DVD. That's why I watched. And yeah. I put it on <laughs> my ultra awesome smart TV and I'm like hit yeah. play I'm like how is this going to look it actually looked pretty okay All right, perfect I was you like know, ah, I thank god I didn't have to rent this for $4 <laughs> uh, <laughs> I knew exactly where your DVD was too yeah, yeah. Oh, that's weird <laughs> isn't it it's weird <laughs> Do you guys, guys want to leave together? And James, can I get a ride? Oh, no, get a ride. no problem. No problem. Because you got the upgrade edition. You got the 1.5. The green, yeah, I got yeah, the green, the green one. one. Got the green case. Uh, There's two editions with both of hotties on it. Both hotties spaces on it. Smash right. Matt, there. Nap, Matt, Matt, are they in napkins? No, Rubenshaw Rodriguez and Mila Jovich. Oh, I thought you were talking about Mia and, and the guy that played Matt. Um, <laughs> no, please right. don't put him so on the cover. So let's get let's keep rolling. So they they've escaped this harrowing situation of zombies, but Alice is for a, a moment separated again i'm sure you were thrilled about yep. this yep um, just walking around walks through a kennel because reasons she's just for no reason she's just like wonder what's in here she wants to adopt a dog wonder oh we got, well, we got doggies in here <laughs> guys well, well, you, i mean we guys. might know what she's doing if she ever spoke but she still has just the <laughs> blink blink <laughs> it's true how dare you knock her great acting ability? I know. Z zombie, d her I great mean, acting ability. Man, where's my Oscar then? If that's great acting. <laughs> 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 the zombie dog walks in. This I love from a fan of the games. This was straight out of the games. The dog looked like someone just dumped tomato soup all over it. I think that's what they did. <laughs> we can't really put it. We can't really, uh, you know. Right. We can't skin a dog alive. We can't skin a dog so alive. And we can't put prosthetics on them and harmful no. things that hurt animals. So well, who's got the tomato soup? And apparently they kept having problems because they kept the dogs kept licking off all the stuff they would put on them to yeah. cover them in this yeah. stuff. Oh. And so they were having really hard times getting the shots that they needed. <laughs> but the zombie dog, which ended up looking really cool, shows it did. up. It did look cool. Um, She's right kind of by a door. She's and and is able to scooch into the door before the dog can jump and get her, mm. essentially. But as soon as she gets into the door, this zombie jumps on her and she freaking Steven Seagal's this zombie, like straight up bunch of like fast hand slapping chest punches, just she, like dude, Seagal. She just watched Under Siege 2. Did you see it? Wasn't <laughs> yes. it? I told you yes, about this. Scene. I was. I was like, laughed so bah, hard. Bah, 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 bah. And she's like, <laughs> she's like, whoa. Yeah. I didn't know I could do that. It was a Jason Bourne moment, right? When neither could I. <laughs> I. I somehow transferred my presence to you. And now you're a, and now you're a master at Apkido. A non a non legitimate Irish martial arts <laughs> that no one gives a crap about. <laughs> this isn't accredited. <laughs> she Aikidoed this zombie cop. And apparently her <laughs> zombie cop. apparently her kick is like strong enough to destroy their brain. Yes. Because she's just like, wow, wow. <laughs> It's quads, done. man. <laughs> quads. Quads. It's totally quads. You, you worked out your quads, did you not? All those years, did you? I did, and you don't know. You have no idea how many dead people are just out there for me <laughs> kicking them in the head. <laughs> but you see the boots she was wearing; those things probably weighed forty pounds each. Like you could knock somebody out with one of those combat boots. Yeah, those crazy. are the only only shoes I own. And the red dress. They're nice boots. The dog that was They're outside nice boots. busts in the window, and she goes back out the same door, and the dog was like, I just went out that way. <laughs> that, honestly, <laughs> it, was, it was kind of funny. I thought it was funny. For sure. Uh, like, there, there's six more zombie dogs right. that but, show up. But she has now acquired... Yes, off the zombie cop. A Beretta. A 9 uh, millimeter Beretta. A silver Beretta from the where, silver, A silver Beretta. This is where Alice finds out that she's cracked at fighting zombies. <laughs> she finds out, yeah. yeah. She, she unleashes her inner Ashley Williams from Evil Dead. <laughs> yep. Bro, mid-air jumping Dobermans, and she's headshotting these things as they're running at her. No problem whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And then, and this I want to give her all the props for, she trained three months to be able to pull this move off. This jumping wall. She jumps. She jump up, pivots off the wall, and kicks this dog right in the face. <laughs> yep. the Arnold Schwarzenegger scenes. style. Yes. Right? You know, Arnold was watching the movie going, yes, this is fantastic. <laughs> they went through a lot of Punch. dogs to train her for that. Punch the dog. <laughs> Punch it. Oh. Nobody likes punching animals more than Arnie. <laughs> and he was like... 
Pirates. What is this movie? Get my agent. How am I not in this? <laughs> I would have made it better. <laughs> I would have made it better. Right. This is how I would have made it better. I want to be the liquor because the pectoral muscles on the liquor are so great. <laughs> Pour right. tomato soup on me. <laughs> too, for too long, all my muscles have been hidden by skin. But if you remove the skin, they just see the muscles directly. <laughs> That's all right, listen, this will be fantastic, okay? We'll just take the skin off and all you'll see, I'll look like a zombie. But they'll finally see all of me. <laughs> For what I really am. <laughs> it would have been perfect. <laughs> the end right. of the podcast. Hit You're the right. We're done. <laughs> it would have been perfect. Well, we already answered the right. question at the end then. That's right. Well, I'm sure the yes, patrons have been, some thoughts, but yes. He would have made it better. Would have been great. But <laughs> yeah, she won't. But it's a, a legit impressive move that she does run out. And there's no wires. There's yeah. nothing. No, it's a really good back when people did yes. stunts. Awesome. That, that's why I say yeah. Mila. I'm just gonna call her Mila. Is probably one is on the Mount Rushmore of badass female action heroes. I'll watch an action movie she's in, and I don't. Even, I don't even have to know what it's about. I'm just tell me, hey, there's an action movie with Mila Yosevich. I'm like, oh, let's watch it. Absolutely. And she's that's, wearing a napkin in this one too. Pro, the Stop chances, painting on the napkin. The chances are like <laughs> she was well compensated for it. <laughs> She met her husband wearing that napkin. Wear, That's how she got him. I'd wear a napkin for thirty million, million dollars. Yeah, thank you. With thirty million, you wear a napkin. Listen, I, I mean, they met during this million. movie too. <laughs> <laughs> they met during this movie. They were engaged a year after the movie came out, and now they are married with children still to this day. So the napkin works is all I'm saying. Yeah, okay? and all they I did got, was make I got him, movies. I got him from Psycho Hiker without the napkin. Without okay, the, you don't need the sure, napkin. That's true. <laughs> you don't need a napkin. Uh, <laughs> Doesn't take uh, much to attract Ryan. I'm just joking. <laughs> wow. wow. Shots fired. I'm Throw joking. Throw away the flip flop. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I should, let's talk about this now for a second. We'll take a break in the action real quick, like a five minute or because you brought that up. And I know we've mentioned it here and there on the show, made reference to Rick Foster's a couple times. <laughs> I know on one episode, you're like, psycho hiker, like real subtle, <laughs> like, you know, and shameless plug, shameless plug. But, I, for those of you, I want to be more direct just so that you guys know exactly what this is we're talking about. There is a movie that, uh, this one was not an Enough Stupid, which was our movie group that I, I had nothing to do with this. This was all the three of them here and Rick uh, Foster as well and many other towns people. Kurt was part of it. Um, they made a, uh, was there six of them? Seven? There, all right. So it's an eight part YouTube series. There we go. Or a feature film trilogy. A trilogy of films. Yes. Because all together, how long is the whole thing? Five hours and 20 minutes. Okay. But it's split up. So it's not yes. like so do that long. in one sitting. <laughs> yes. But it's about a psych, it's a horror series uh, about a psychotic hitchhiker. And for those of you who know the show and have listened for a long time, it Bob is the freaking psychotic psycho hiker. Hello. Yep. <laughs> the titular Hi. villain. In the, Hi. And he beats me up like a lot. <laughs> yes. Yes. So we got to change thing. that one day. We got to change that. <laughs> We gotta one, be a tag one team. One day I will kick your. Oh, that would actually be yes. great. Let's do that. What's up? That's yeah, what's put up. two psychos together as a tag I actually, team. Yeah, I actually. Like you yeah. could be a buddy. I like buddy that cop. better than beating you up. Actually, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good idea. And so, who all wrote, you you and Rick wrote it? Who all have wrote it? So when we come to like writers, it's like Rick, Bob was a big story input person. Mm. Nelson helped with the, Nelson Rivera, who was yeah. another friend of ours. He helped with the story for a little bit. Yeah. Caitlin Capitelli Cone was a she was there. She was a screenwriter on parts of it, um, and then I did screenplay writing as well. So there was, you know, a lot kind of, of a written by committee. Yeah, committee, committee. But I'd say the three committee. of you were kind of the main shepherd or shepherds of the project. The shepherds would be yeah. Robert Hauser, yeah. Rick T. Foster, and myself. And yourself. So yes. you guys want to see this thing? And Stephanie, um, we shot this over. I say we. You shot this over the span of how many years? Eight. Eight. Well, yeah. technically seven. So you'll see Stephanie age about 10 years. Uh, well, and Bob too. But Bob's I pass, like, I pass out in the, the woods same. and I wake up fatter. It's pretty <laughs> amazing. That's not what I meant. Your <laughs> words, not Mars. <laughs> That's not what I meant. It's like, wait a minute. How did that happen? I'm just saying, it's, I have to single you out because Bob has looked the same for his entire life pretty much, right? But like, Joe does it too. Watching Joe's beard and haircut change throughout the whole thing. I'm like, oh, look, that's... 22 year old Stephanie, and that's 29 year old yeah. Stephanie. <laughs> Pretty yeah. much, yeah. You know, because they yes. shot it over a very long period of time, but it also was take place in three nights. It takes place in 24 <laughs> hours. <laughs> this is a movie. This is a movie that takes place in 24 hours, yes. a night to a dawn the to dusk. The longest 24 or whatever. hours yeah. ever. <laughs> 
<laughs> Nighttime, so, dawn, and day is what it is. Yeah, I know we're kind of yeah. giving it a hard time, but there are some legitimate great there times are, to be had. Oh, great time. Yeah. It's a, there's amazing parts of yes. that. Yes. Oh, it's fantastic. I'll tell you this. It's a terrible movie. Oh, well. <laughs> it's not. It's good. I think it's good, but... Go check it out. Well, there were a lot of times, too... Did you find it on YouTube? You can find... Yes. Okay, it is sorry, on go YouTube. ahead. No, I was going to say there's a lot... So... I wasn't a part of like any of the obviously editing process or yeah. anything like that. So a lot of the premieres, like I hadn't seen any of it. Yeah. Like I just knew mostly like the parts that I was in and I was just like, this is awesome. Yeah. Like it so, was really, really cool. My wife still hasn't seen it. <laughs> <laughs> I love ah. it. Well, you got to wow. get her to sit down for five and a half hours and get her to watch it. <laughs> exactly. Tonight. Tonight's yeah. the no. night. <laughs> Probably because she... Hey, baby, guess lived. what we're watching? Yeah, right. Yeah. Five yeah. hours lived, of Psycho. She Hunter. lived the behind the scenes. I think that was enough for her. She was like, I don't need to watch it. I mean, I... Uh. <laughs> I get that. <laughs> yep. More so, than anyone, I think. So just search like uh, Psycho Hiker, two words on YouTube. You'll find it. It's the the channel it's on is One Epic Shot. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, One Epic Shot. Okay, productions. It's out there to be seen. Go see it, guys. Have fun. Have fun watching Bob. Be yeah, an absolute it's a fun psychopath. movie. Have fun with it. And chasing Stephanie around, and you know, always mm -hmm. good fun. It's good fun. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. So after Alice uh, finds out she's cracked at hunting zombies and shooting guns and wall kicking animals in the face, uh, she goes back to the rest of the group. And Matt is in, well, not the rest of the group. First, she just meets up with Matt, who's hanging out like in one of the office because it's backstory time, right? It's that part of the movie. And there's paperwork strewn everywhere because after all, the office workers turn into zombies. They're like, oh, paperwork. I hate paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> There's a stiff breeze under uh, here underground. Bill Lombard would have a <laughs> fit if he walked into this office. <laughs> uh, so he, Matt finds Lisa's ID badge. Uh, some girl. We don't know who she is. She, it's the girl with some lip implants. It's like, you know, Lisa. <laughs> and She's a German she model. Had really good lips. <laughs> She's a German model? She's a German she model. She's very pretty. Yeah. Okay. I'm not saying that in a mean way. I'm just saying Right after he finds her ID badge, here comes Lisa the zombie stumbling up. And I didn't know they were brother and sister. I thought that they were lovers that's what i thought too and then he's like it's my sister i was like oh hey. <laughs> because even as she's coming at him I th matt kind of had a look on his face like are we about to kiss right now like is this gonna happen like, he, and, yeah uh, and then he like kind of reaches right that's what i'm saying she's just like, <laughs> <laughs> right. like but then bro. she like straddles him too like has a something alice saves him by it's hitting my, her with a paperweight or something yeah, boom paperweight huge paperweight don't worry it's his sister and we find out his sister was trying to get inside information to bury umbrella because matt outs himself he's not really a cop no one thought you were, Matt. Yeah, shocker. Um, <laughs> he's a freedom fighter of some kind. There's this group underground that wants to take down Umbrella and expose them for all that they really are. And she was going to get a sample of the virus. And we find out, she hasn't revealed this yet, but Alice at this moment has a flashback that shows she was the one working with Alice uh, to get her what she needed. But she, what she doesn't know yet if she's the one that double-crossed Alice or not. No, that's she still the mystery. The memory yet. The mystery know. of the movie. Exactly. Because Matt thinks that somebody double-crossed Alice. Or double, right. Matt thinks somebody double-crossed Lisa. Lisa. Not knowing that Alice was the contact. Correct. Yes. All right. And, so and this of course, is, Alice is just sitting there like, oh, no. I don't know. Should go. I say something? Sucks whatever <laughs> that another, was. I had another flashback, but it wasn't as exciting as the other one. <laughs> no. Can we go back to the James Purvoy flashbacks, please? <laughs> yeah, that was so much better. Uh, this is where Kaplan basically tells, informs everybody that hey, we've got one hour basically to get out of here right? because they're going to seal the whole place to so the virus doesn't get out. If we don't get out in an hour, no one's coming to save us. They will seal the place off, and that will be it. And so their big plan to get out of here is to go back and turn the Red Queen back on yeah, so that she can help them figure out how to get out. Right. Which Michelle she, Rodriguez is like, why, they, why is she going to help us after we were just like – LOL, bye, and, you know, <laughs> clicked her off, you know, but Peace it out. makes sense. Peace out. But that's their big plan. And she goes back, she's like, told you. To <laughs> right, that's literally, she's like, told you not to shut me off. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, I told you not to shut me off. Told, told you not to shut me off. It's right. And now you're getting chased by zombies, ain't ya? Well, you weren't very clear, so <laughs> <laughs> I blame you. <laughs> Yeah, but she does what's helpful is she does give him a super helpful zombie tutorial, right? She's like, yeah. Right, so you got to shoot him in the Here's head. Here's the big, uh, <laughs> the big T virus expo dump now. 
You have to. <laughs> this would have been really useful earlier, <laughs> but okay. This is like when you play a game and you skip past all that stuff. Like whatever, I just want to play. I just want to play, and then you have to go back and redo the tutorial because you. Oh just my keep gosh! The amount of times I did that as a kid. I'm like, oh, I gotta yeah. shoot them in the head. I gotta yeah. cut their heads off. I gotta right when the when the red queen at the spinal cord. That's yep. right. Sever at the spinal cord. Or damage the brain. <laughs> that was pretty spot on. You gotta stuff. damage it. <laughs> that's a that's, give her an Oscar. Give her like an Oscar. I, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm telling you, if all I have to do is stand and blink for an Oscar, that should <laughs> should be at least three right there. <laughs> She's like, but look, I, I can't let anybody get out of this facility. The Red Queen. I can't let anybody get out. That's infected. That's infected. Simon Pegg should have just played the Red Queen. And all it takes. <laughs> all, all it takes. And when I when I'm not available, it could be James. <laughs> That's right, except we all sound my exactly British the same. ladies sound like this. Well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> well, that's all those uh, those steampunk uh, era games that we play, like like The Witcher. They all sound like that. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, they're all from that really specific part of England. <laughs> <laughs> the Red Queen. Now, at this point, um, Rain has been bit on the hand, right? And this, yeah. this is when the Red Queen goes, one bite, even one scratch will do you, mate. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> and everyone and I'm like Rain is sitting there like this is awkward. Like she's yeah, just sitting there like, like everyone just oh looks no. at her. <laughs> <laughs> and I like how she doesn't she I mean Right. She obviously wants to survive, but she doesn't say anything. She's just like, mm, yep, that would be me. And, you know, I'm just going to say, where? Who's going to say something to my face? I'll throw chop. <laughs> right. Then again, if someone says something to That's fair. Do. I would not say anything to her either. That's I'd be true. like, I'm just going to let this go. Let this um, go. The Red Queen does tell them about some hatch that leads into the utility corridors underneath. And what love when they get down there. Kaplan knows everything about the utility corridor. Oh, these are the utility corridors that run underneath the hole. And I'm like, if you knew they were there, why didn't you have the idea to find a hatch and go into utility corridors? Because well. he's not British. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Americans don't think good underground. We got to stay. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We need fresh air. <laughs> we, need, we need fresh air. <laughs> hey, man, this is a suck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they get down in there and uh, they're in the sewer tunnels. And uh, almost immediately, uh, there's like 47 zombies bust through the sewer pipe, and they're they're holding off all of them with like this grate. Just one sewer yeah. grate. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> grab the grate. <laughs> the but getting, careful, your fingers don't let them bite you. They're oh. all over, and this is the problem I have with this scenario. Maybe this is just too much Walking Dead I watched over the years. They put them in this scenario where really two or three of them should have died. I mean, there were so many zombies; they were practically buried at one point, but yeah. they all are able to get out. Right. And get away, and they, they just climb get up the on pipes. the pipes. Yeah, like, climb up the pipes. In the in the in the process of doing that, Rain gets bit again for like the third time in the movie. She's like bit on her, uh, or she gets scratched or something. Uh, Kaplan she gets bit gets, again. Kaplan gets bit on his leg. Yeah, and she gets bit again. But Rain got Rain got bit too when they were trying to save JD. So like that's right. Rain's been bit on the yeah, hand and the forearm time, right? and, yeah. and her neck. Doesn't she get bit? Oh yeah, JD point. JD bites this her is, neck. And then they, yeah, so now JD's back as a zombie. You remember that time I gave you a hickey on your neck? Right. <laughs> Let's reenact like, it. By <laughs> the, time, the time Rain gets bit on the neck, I, I would just be like, you know, Michelle, you might be zombie proof. I don't, I mean, nothing's happening. You know. You're kind of that badass. She that, makes it a long way before. She changed, yeah. that's what I, like, yes. J, JD, right? The one that, yeah. So yeah. He, yeah. he changes, like, immediately. immediately. Because he's soft. Because he's, he's a, a weak-ass yeah. bitch. Yeah, he's soft. <laughs> he was homecoming king. He's soft. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's a trust fund saying. baby. <laughs> Very big trust fund baby. It's written in his eyebrows. Does it tweeze him? Yeah. Kaplan. This <laughs> they're, is a, they're too clean. This is this is the moment. I'm. Kaplan gets tackled, and he is clearly like covered up by zombies, but he inexplicably is able to to the point where they're like shoot him. Like I think Michelle Rodriguez is going to shoot him in the head to like put him out of his misery, like yeah. they do in these zombie movies. But she's like, I can't see. I can't do it. Mm. But he's able to get out of it, and then they toss him the gun. And he's got one bullet, and you think he's going to shoot himself? He puts the gun in his mouth. Well, he's got his—that's his six shooter. That's his six shooter. His six shooter with, with infinity one ammo has one bullet. And now. He still now it has only one has one left. bullet left. <laughs> and he goes, "Oh, yeah. that's lucky." And he puts the gun in his mouth, but then he doesn't even shoot himself. This is just a from a zombie movie as the uh, as the genre goes was not a well done scene. Uh, personally, no. as far as well, you know. Yeah, that. so like Kaplan's up on this pipe. Right. The whole other team is in whatever on the area on the other pipe. Right. And Kaplan's like, you got to leave. Just right. go. Go. They're like, no. I'd be like, bye. Right. And so this is the moment <laughs> right. where you're surrounded by zombies where you shoot yourself. But Kaplan doesn't. He goes like, you want to make you work for your food. And then he finds a way out. 
so and like, then oh, all that's of a good. sudden, hey, look, there's I'm another, glad, yeah, I'm glad another there's utility a, tunnel here. Look, there's a great move. Oh, it. imagine that. <laughs> yeah, everyone leaves, and so at this point, we have Matt, the whiny idiot, uh, Rain, who's mostly dead, and <laughs> or undead, <laughs> right. dun, dun, dun. and Allison Spence. We've never even said this guy's name. James Purvoy, her fake husband's name is Spence. If you couldn't, if you become more punchable. Oh, this was the this was the more flashbacks, Spence. and she yes, she's like, oh, it's Spence. It's Spence. Okay. Um, uh, she got a name. They're dragging. Did you like this? a name this to point, the image? They're dragging Michelle Rodriguez as long as she goes. When I get out of here, I'm getting laid. I love the yeah. <laughs> God. Like, I was I, like, Man. She spoke to me every time I saw her. Like, God, uh, laid to rest, maybe. I don't. I don't think. <laughs> what's that classic? What's that classic <laughs> true grit line? She reminds me of me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, this is awesome. <laughs> my, my daughter was like, "That's such a random moment to say." It's that. a very random moment. I want to clean yeah. yourself up first. Yeah. Like- <laughs> How about after I get out of here and have a shower? This is when Alice has visions of bunnies getting shot up with like rhino tranquilizers or something. Like they're in the lab just shooting these bunnies right. up with drugs. They've now they've made it back yeah, to the, this the area. Needles, like, <laughs> the needle's like a thick straw. Expo, expo flashback dump. Like we're going to shoot these bunnies up. And yet I still didn't know what was going on. <laughs> and she snaps out of the bunny vision to be like, there's a cure! And starts rummaging through the lab to get to the claw game that we this saw This is earlier. where they kept it. <laughs> right. But Blue for the gone. virus, green for the antivirus. Green for the antivirus. That's how she knows there's yeah. an antivirus because of the claw game thing where it was blue and green. But there's no green vials. There's no blue vials left. There's no vials. And this is where she confesses to Matt while she's searching. I was your sister's contact. You double-crossed my sister. She's, right. No one I gives a crap about yet. your sister. I don't remember the truth. Yeah. What a great, con- convenient excuse. Yeah. I, I don't remember the truth. I don't remember. Tell don't me remember. the truth. I don't the remember truth. the truth. Tell me. <laughs> I, had slept, I had sex with suspense. Okay. That's not what I'm asking about, but cool. <laughs> that's the only other good thing. Good story. Good to know. I'm glad that's, that's the only other thing I can remember. <laughs> yeah. The one thing I can remember. <laughs> At this very same moment, I laugh so hard at this. Spence has his own flashback. Yep. Oh, yep. Where Spence is realized, he's sitting there going, Oh, crap. Am I the drama? Right? Like, I think I'm the bad guy. Like, he's realizing he's the one that double crossed them. Yeah. And he's the one that threw the virus in there, the faceless guy we didn't see. And then he just and immediately all becomes like an asshole again. Like, before, he's just like, Well, before it was he me. even does, this is what was so funny about it. He's still sitting there having his flashback, and Alice is just looking at his face. And they look at each other, and then the gun is sitting there. And so she just knew before he did anything, look at this dude's face. This is the bad guy right here. <laughs> Women have that power. He's thinking bad stuff. <laughs> Women have that power to He's do thinking, Is that what head is? Yeah. Like, my wife knows if I eat the last bag of Doritos. <laughs> <But I'll say laughs> she's, like, she's like, Maybe it's because she goes a- looking for it, and it's not there. <laughs> You ate that Cool Ranch, didn't you? Yeah. Look it's at your face. Cool. Yeah. He got you. At least it's like problems. all over his face. <laughs> like, <laughs> cheese everywhere. <laughs> but how do you know? Uh, <laughs> but Spence is just standing there. <laughs> it's like, look at him. He's about to turn into the bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> what was his point anyway? <laughs> both to be the bad to, guy. I had to Google his reason for dumping the T virus. I had to literally money. pause the movie and Google it was why for was money. it. Okay, but it didn't say anything but like that. But was it, though? What, think, like, literally yeah, what? Yeah, I literally... He said, you know how much it'll worth? It was worth millions and millions he was talking about. what they He dumped the T-Virus to the, cover his... This is what Google said. Yeah. According to Google, dumped the T-Virus to cover his tracks and did it for money. He was going to sell the T-Virus. But wouldn't he just want to take the extra vial of T-Virus and sell six of them instead of five? Well, that he makes that to way cover. too much sense. No one could he go down there to cover. and know that it was gone. Yeah, yeah. but... Well, who would have known that so it was So he wanted the building to lock down, basically. Yeah, exactly. Okay. But if you're... All a good master good thief, you wouldn't need to <laughs> right. unleash anything. If he was Danny Ocean, oh, man, you could just walked in, grab it, be like, "Well, eh, I'm just gonna take you this the road." Just yeah. put a lab coat on and be like, "I work here." Yeah, yeah. Uh, I work. Or I'm just gonna take these for cleaning. Yeah. He could have <laughs> literally replaced uh, them with like vials of Listerine. We're good. <laughs> yeah, I like when it this broke is, and they were just hard. This is Windex. What <laughs> this is, is yeah. this? Whoa, this bunny really just died. Like. <laughs> Oh, we're not man. ready for human trials. No, we're not ready for human trials. <laughs> Aren't they ever ready for human trials? Stick them. <laughs> it's fine. Spence. Definitely done, sir. Stick them anyway. Stick them anyway. <laughs> Spence. Sir, they exploded. Good. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Mark it down. Stick That's them again. That's actually what we wanted. Everybody knows I wanted him to explode, right? Put, put it on clearance. Of course we do, sir. <laughs> now that they've exploded, we can package this and sell it. <laughs> 
That's pretty um, good. I like that. <laughs> That's pretty good. You. Um, all right. Spence gets to the gun, even though she lunges for it. Uh, um, she just left it laying there. Yeah, the classic. Smart. Um, he gets it, and he's like, Alice, I know we boned one time. <laughs> Are you in or out? Like, like, come with me, right? We'll have all this money. Are you in or out? Like my marriage to you is a sham. Why would in I come with out, you? In or out. Yeah. Bob would have been like, burgers? <laughs> he, he, would have, the burgers. he would have still had his half-eaten in burger from the beginning. Have you ever had an In-N-Out burger? I have not. Oh, good uh, stuff, dude. Where'd you, where'd you get one? California. California. Okay, uh, we got another reason to go to actually, California. That's you right. can get them as far east as uh, Colorado. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Colorado. Let's, let's go to Venice Beach. The important thing isn't yeah. whether or not she answers in or out because the water zombie pops up and is like, I'm in, man. <laughs> <laughs> I like how that water zombie was just laying there the whole time. It took and it me was to... Like, Q three two one. Like a hell of a sound match. Undertaker pops up. It yeah. took me two hours she does. to get out of that leaking tank from the beginning of the movie <laughs> to get here. That's right. I'm here, uh, and he disposes of her pretty quickly and ends up locking them all in the room. Uh, Spence gets away, okay. but he gets bit. He does get bit well, so by the water Spence. zombie. Yeah. Water zombie comes up, yeah. bites Spence on the neck, disposes her, and now he's like, all right, deuces. And before he leaves, yeah. he turns to her and he goes, you really think people like Matt are going to change anything? And, and then the camera cuts to dumb old Matt. And I just wanted Alice <laughs> to be like, well, no, not like Matt, but other people, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not like Matt, but yeah, other people. Other people could do uh, it. That's funny. Okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> they're trapped, and the Red Queen comes in the speaker, and she says, uh, after Spence leaves, I'm sorry, I've been a very bad girl. Yeah, by the way, I created this super mutant monster. And I'm like... With the greatest tongue. <laughs> if I was in that room, I'd just be like, please clarify. Uh, it's like, I need more information. You haven't given us a lot at this point, so maybe you can just speed this up. Oh. <laughs> I didn't realize how close they were to the train at this point, but Spence is like right there. At Literally, the next scene. Like just next boom, scene, to, the, the train. to the train. And he gets out the antivirus, and he's got the antivirus in the in the drug gun. He's going to shoot it into his arm, and he hears a noise. I hate this stuff in movies. He's like a bump in the night or whatever. What? What? <laughs> like shoot it, shoot it into your arm, shoot yeah. the thing yes. into your arm. I'm just like, going to stop what I'm doing. I, I literally <laughs> need to do important. this to prevent myself from turning into a zombie. But do it now. Hold on. Do I heard a noise. <laughs> <laughs> Ten seconds of him going, uh, what? Uh, uh, before the thing actually appears. Yeah. In that time, he could have. Now, I know he ends up getting killed by this liquor anyway, but maybe you get away. At this point, you've at least shot up the antivirus into your system. Mm. Hate that stupid stuff. Yeah. It's a trope. It is. It is. <laughs> uh, the liquor just eats him for lunch, basically. In the most terrible CGI in the computer screen way. <laughs> you know, I really liked this movie up until the point of that. Like, oh, look at I the, was like, man, well, this is I just thought like, you would love that. I'm sitting here watching this going, Steph's going to love this part. Why? Because when, <laughs> every time we have a movie where a creature has a tongue long enough to punch you in the face with it, you're here in part. Remember the people getting tongue punched it's in Tremors true. too. I mean, that's one movie. <laughs> and this that's is now two. It's two. It's three. Movie. It's three. Every one we've had with a long tongue so punching monster. So that creature monster. was the reason you wanted me on this yes. one? Yes. <laughs> Just for creatures with tongue punching <laughs> capabilities. I want to be on every single movie you do with creatures with tongue punching Oh, you know what? You know which one she missed? <laughs> She missed Deep Rising. Oh, you're right. Deep, Deep Rising. Rising. Oh, that's a classic. Well, you know. <laughs> I didn't know about this creature until after you were already going to be on that. But then I watched it. I go, <laughs> like, oh, every Steph movie love this. <laughs> we do with the weird tongue creatures, you're on the episode. <laughs> ah, that's fair. <laughs> All right. I can't argue with that. All right. <laughs> Red Queen offers the people still trapped in the room a bargain. Rain's life for the door code because Rain is clearly, inf I'm not, what? I'm not infected. She's like 17 bites all over. <laughs> yeah. She's just like sweating. She's like, I'm fine. Coffee green blood. She's like, whatever, leave me alone. Yeah. Let's get out of here. Vomiting. <laughs> like, yes, you look great. Yes, you okay. look great. And she wants him, to her credit, she's like, yeah, kill me, chop my head off. She's like, there's an axe. She's putting her head down. Oh, yeah, she's right. like, just take my head. Like, take my head, kill me. And even the Red Queen's like, kill her, kill her, kill her, like over and over oh, again. Yes, this is very fun. <laughs> Oh, we're having a good time. Yes, kill her. Kill her now. We love Eastern European people. Sorry for making fun of you. Well, then Alice just hits the like computer screen. The TV, yeah. And somehow the entirety of like the system shuts down. Like it's I all through it. this one. For a second, I thought, I was thing. like, they did not just do this. 
the TV was the weak spot <laughs> of, <laughs> of the AI. The three no, by five TV. No. That was the problem. No. But the door bust open and we realized Kaplan was still alive and had the kill switch for the Red Queen. And so Kaplan is the one that shut her off. You know, and this I'm like, was Kaplan's alive. Yes. And this was almost a good line. <laughs> what? Almost a good line. Oh, yes. Because he opens the door and he's like, F- wouldn't open the door. So I had to fry her. <laughs> and I was like, you could have left it at, you could have like gone yeah. through the door and just left it at, wouldn't open the door. Great line. And that would have been it. Like that right. would have been perfect. But so I, I had, had to fry her. her. Just in case you didn't know what I meant. <laughs> He's holding the button right next to his face. Yeah. Like, it's like, in case it's unclear, <laughs> I did this. Well, you know, for those brain dead teenagers, you have to hey, spoon feed If they had known Kaplan's on the other side, they would have been screaming at him to open the door, right? Yeah. Like that's, exactly. that's true. Like, notice how they you were think stu- he was just standing behind the door, like listening, like waiting. Like- <laughs> I, I seriously He's think. He's just like, I'm not getting screamed at this time. I think yeah. it's a Kaplan thing. And not a door thing because they're trapped in this room and the door won't open and they didn't scream at anybody because Kaplan wasn't there. <laughs> open the door! <laughs> right. <laughs> <I'm> saying, <laughs> Do it, man! Come on! Uh, Poor cat. He's been through the <laughs> ringer in this yeah. movie. <laughs> Seriously. All right. But and so Kaplan gets her. Uh, they get to the train. There's Spence's body. And now you know his dead self's just sitting there waiting to be a zombie, right? I mean, it's like no one thought yeah. what happened wasn't you know. going to happen. Yeah. Right, right. Like he does his reach, Uh, right as she's about to try and get the gun back from him. Right, exactly. And she grabs the axe, and what does she say? I miss you so much, or whatever. Like, or I've really started missing you, or something along those lines. Is that what? No, that was the line. I don't even. Hold on, I might have it in here. Oh, I'm missing you already. already. That's That's what. Yeah, I'm missing you already. I'm missing you. (laughs) Breakups are hard. Thankfully, I I have all those flashbacks. (laughs) (laughs) Go back to. She, there's a little something. There's a little extra stank on this axe swing. She axes him <laughs> mm-hmm. with this thing, and I'm like, I'll, as breakups go, a rough one. Uh, and then she drops the so basic wedding ring. Yeah. Oh, yes. The property the of Umbrella <laughs> Corporation. The property of Umbrella Corporation on the <laughs> wedding ring. I have to look for those next time. They, right. They, they tell Kaplan to power up the train, and he manages to do it without a single person yelling at him. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Power the train up! Why isn't this moving yet? <laughs> He's learning. Because you're not on it. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, she shoots up Rain with the antivirus. They have this little touching scene. Actually, I thought this was, a, I'm all joking aside. Where, she, where Rain says, "I didn't. I don't want to be like one of them, wandering around with no soul. Um, it, you, if this happens, if I turn, I trust you to take care of it." She's talking to Alice. You know, you'll you'll take me out. She's like, "Absolutely," but it's not going to come to that. Shoots her up with the anti antivirus, and then her head kind of crest falls, and you think maybe she's dead. And obviously, Alice did too because she draws down on her and is just holding the gun a foot from her face. Yeah, and then. Just comes up and grabs the gun. I'm like, just say you're not dead. Like, <laughs> you could have got shot in the face. I'm hey, not dead. Right. Yet. It's like, uh, just because I tried to do a jump scare <laughs> as I'm re- as I'm swatting the gun. <laughs> ah! <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's what happens with Jesse Eisenberg. I mean, he shot Bill Murray. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. In zombie Another zombie yeah. movie. Yep. Just say I'm not dead. No reason to jump scare her. And. She's like, I think I'll have this back, and takes the gun back mm, yeah. away from her. Yeah. Um, this is when uh, this is this is when Mila Yosevich leans in. She goes, oh, "I could kiss you." It was kind of random, but yeah, they seemed, it was random it, well, because yeah. they never developed a relationship. Yes, That's like they're I'm not. Saying. They seem to be like such close friends of like, oh, this is like my best friend. I'll protect you forever. I love you, but like they don't know each other, and there was like, like no buildup of that relationship no. at all. Hell <laughs> breaks loose on this train. Matt gets clawed through the wall and no sells it. Uh, Did you you remember what I'm talking about? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Ow, yeah. Like, what? This, <laughs> this right gigantic here. creature claw that just clawed through yeah. the exterior He's of a train. He's selling it like he just got like yeah. scratched at a rave in Venice Beach. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, and then of course, of course, right before Kaplan gets killed, the liquor comes through the window uh, and yeah. eats Kaplan. Somebody goes, Kaplan, get us out of here! <laughs> 
<laughs> Freaking yell at him. Yell at Cap. Oh, he's right now. Cap, get us out of here. Yeah. Get us out of here. I'm going as fast as I can. I'm going as fast as I can. Yeah. Yeah. Get well, Arnold Schwarzenegger. So, get off of my train. Get out of the so split. I feel so bad for him. He had such a hard time in this oh, movie. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, Matt is it actually... <laughs> before I should say before that happens, I just I just love that the last thing someone did to Kaplan right before he died was yell at him. I just I'm sorry. It is. Um, <laughs> it was poetic <laughs> to yeah. do something better. Um, Alice puts two or three slugs right in this liquor's brain. The liquor you know, has jumped into the train. I love the point. The pointless like as this is trying to be an action scene. Yeah. And there's like this whipping 360 pan around Alice. Yeah. And it's just like sparks this yeah. that what, like these pipes no monster yet these no and like the pipes are on the you know bracket yeah, there's, yeah. there's in, inexplicably there's a bundle of pipes hanging <laughs> from this zip pulley in the middle of an otherwise empty train car yes that, like in case they wanted to get some plumbing work done sure while they were in this just tunnel. wanted to lay I some mean, more if pipe if you're stuck in a train for God <laughs> I thank you very long. much <laughs> 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 That's all, uh. that's all Alice has on the brain. <laughs> <laughs> Matt finally uh. does something useful, and like the like Joey Pants got it in the Fugitive, he just pushes this thing of pipes down this like zip line that's in the top of the train car, and straight into the monster, almost shoves the liquor out of the entire thing. Yeah, but he's able to hang on and not quite. It's like, oh, Matt did the first useful thing well, he's in the got a entire movie. Super oh, long tongue to hang on. So right. <laughs> Alice realized that. Yeah. Alice, this is when she gets punched in the face by the tongue at one point. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> it just comes in yep. and punches her in the face and knocks her She's out like, oh back. man, it's been a while since I've had that. <laughs> Second date, no tongue. Yeah. Finally. Ah. This is she, third date material. What are you doing? And the right. pipes from the bundle have exploded. She grabs one of them and pins the tongue of this giant monster through the grated floor with this pipe. Okay. And the monster is like, Aah! like, like, Freaking out! It's oh, like yeah. a, I mean, like a sixteen-year-old yeah. emo girl in the nineties getting her first tongue piercing. You know, just like Wah! I resent that. I was gonna say we have a first-hand experience here, <laughs> so you know exactly how this monster feels. I did, I did. So, I you did. Felt, so you felt like a liquor. This is why. This is why I'm on all the movies with the tongue punchers. <laughs> uh, I can tongue can, puncher yourself. I can touch my tongue to my nose. Oh, nice. Bet you didn't all know that. I think this monster could have done that, too. Like, well, considering his tongue was like butt, six probably. feet long. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my mm. gosh. All right. So where the hell are we? Oh, somebody. So now oh, it's no, like, so it's open pinned. the door. Yes, yeah, somebody. Be, if Kaplan was there, they would have yelled at they him. They would have been yelling at, at Kaplan, Kaplan like, but now oh, Kaplan's dead. Doors! <laughs> and, oh wait, <laughs> no, Kaplan's Kaplan. dead. What are we going to do? We got to do it ourselves. <laughs> Guys. And like, why is that door there? Guys. I realized something about this movie. Yeah. This entire movie is just people yelling at people about doors. <laughs> <laughs> That's the whole movie. About Pretty it. much. That's the whole movie. And doors. <laughs> whole Resident doors. Resident doors. <laughs> the doors of <laughs> evil. <laughs> Why is it called Resident Evil to I begin don't with? Know. Even the video game, like, why is this called Resident Evil? The doors she's referencing. I don't like how the opening of the games was like Resident Evil. Evil. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah, but that was like 1996. Yes. That was cool then. That was one of the scariest openings to a video game. The doors... Rick T. Foster would agree with you. That Matt is referencing, or that <laughs> they're... The doors that Alice is referencing this time are trap doors in the bottom. Right. Because now that his the monster's tongue is pinned to the floor, they want to burn him up by dragging him under the track. Well, you know, they got... So, like, there's these bay... They're literally like cargo bay doors, yeah. but they're in the floor. Yes. Of a train. Right. Because, you know, there's a lot of... Things that you dump from the floor Things of the train. that you yeah. have to... <laughs> On especially, the rail. Especially when it comes to cargo. <laughs> Let's, uh, you know, make sure we have like a 6 by 10 door frame. Oh, we got hey. all these pipes hanging up in here. We're just going to dump these on the tracks, yeah. right? Ejecto yeah, cedo, cuz. <laughs> but you know, We're you know what, heavy. guys? Dump some cargo. You know what? We don't know how subway no. construction goes. That's true. So That's true. You'll Google We're it gonna by gonna the end of the day. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I kind of do, because I used to see it all the time in Chicago. And I... <laughs> The train never opened up while I was on it. Because Matt's not, <laughs> because Matt's not Kaplan and knows how to open a door, he gets him open immediately, and the liquor <laughs> gets burnt Poor up. Kaplan. That's not how it happens. He, oh, what are you talking about? No, rain. This is when oh, rain I comes forgot. back. Rain turned into a zombie. Yes. How could I forget? So now rain is a zombie. Clearly, the antivirus didn't work. No. Rain, rain <laughs> comes alive. Matt is useless to do anything against rain, and so Alice has to put her down with yeah. one between the eyes. Right. And then the doors get opened. 
The liquor is burnt up on the tracks. <laughs> Alice shoots rain. Yeah. Rain falls back into the door open switch That's conveniently. Right. Yes. Did it on purpose. Boom. Liquor burned up. That had to smell great. And Ooh, that was something. Then Alice oh that's well that's really it's not the end of the movie. It's part of the that's movie doesn't it. end there. <laughs> Afterwards, Alice is tearing up. She's all sad, she eyes all teary. And Matt's like, Oh, are you okay? I'm like, No, she's sad that you're the only other person left with her, Matt. <laughs> like Alice this just is a had to real kill, bummer. Like yeah. the best character in the movie besides herself. She's had to shoot her. Uh Hazmat team busts in and puts Matt in. Well, Matt the, starts seizing. Yeah, because he's gives yeah. big scratches. So, so he's he gets got his, put into the yeah. nemesis program immediately. Wink, wink. Wink, wink for you know, a future upcoming... Foreshadowing. Look, everybody, yeah. there's a much better buildup than James just gives it credit for. Well, I'm trying to get to the end of this here. This is we're true. on a time thing here. <laughs> but uh, he gets put into the Nemesis program. They're like, put uh, put her into a study program. Alice is going to be studied to see if yeah. she's infected or whatever. Uh, flash forward to however long it's been. Alice, Rick Grimes it in the hospital. Probably 28 days later. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wakes up in a napkin. Yep. Two napkins. Two napkins. Um, <laughs> with a sweet buzz hair. Buzz, oh, yeah. I'm I like, love it. and cool. they, my wife and daughter were ripping on her haircut in the very beginning of the movie. He's like, oh, that haircut's terrible. It is. No, why? It's so bad. I was thinking the same thing. What's wrong? Her hair looks fine. She looks like she has a partial mullet. Did you at any point, either of you, be like, oh, her hair? No. No. Because you're like, men. That's awful. <laughs> Maybe her doing... hair looked way better wet. I'll just say that. And then like, at the end, when she had the shave, I was like, the oh, shy shave thing, the two. I was like, like look, she holes. fixed her bad haircut. Like, that was awesome. Yeah. Was I did. Great. I liked her hair better like that than in the beginning of the movie. Oh, okay. I paid no mind. <laughs> yeah, because you're a man. Why is she wearing a napkin? I, I, I guess originally scripted, it's uh, she was supposed to be nude. And Mila was like, yeah, I don't want to like, they have to walk outside in the middle of the city. <laughs> nude, Can that, you, you know. please give me a napkin? Uh, <laughs> and so this was the compromise. And the director was like, I have some leftover napkins from my Wendy's lunch. <laughs> I know, but then it makes this, <laughs> it makes you make ask this question in universe. You're like, they don't have hospital gowns here. They're just like, well, we hey, have hospital gowns. I was like, gowns. yes, that's what I woke up in the hospital in. Yeah, we have hospital gowns, but the boys were thinking, would this be okay? I, I don't, you know. You know what? Do they? <laughs> More props to Killian Murphy now because he wakes up full dong hanging out in 28 <laughs> days later. I know. She <laughs> casually stro- she casually strolls out into the destroyed chaos. Once again, she's just like, uh. What's going on out here? Welcome to Raccoon City. It's completely destroyed, and that's when the movie ends. Well, she grabs a shotgun. I can't hear you. Oh, she grabs a shotgun first. Oh, that's true. She does grab a shotgun. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. And we got this banging score from Marilyn Manson. Oh, that's right. I forgot to mention that. Yeah, well. That guy's a butt clown. He is. Oh. You know, <laughs> the funny thing is Marco Beltrami had to help him, so. A butt clown? He's a butt clown. <laughs> I can't stand Speaking that Speaking of butt clowns, the first <laughs> award that we give out on this show is the Will Patton Award for Intensity. Because Will Patton, <laughs> even if he was cast as a butt clown in a movie, would give the most intense performance Ever in that type of role. And so we want to recognize the actor that gave the most intense performance in this movie. We start. You want a war? I'll give you a war! I don't want them to gain another yard. You blitz all night! If they cross the line of scrimmage, I'm going to take every last one of you out. You make sure they remember forever. The night they played the Titans. <laughs> <laughs> Flip-flops are flying both ways now. Man, Stephanie, are you okay? I've got a heavy-ass water bottle that's coming your way. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it! <laughs> Let's go. All I, right. If I wasn't worried about ruining equipment, I would throw it. <laughs> throw it. Don't ruin <laughs> Gina. Help me. I got nothing. Who's your Will Patton? Really? I, to say that there's somebody that deserves to be called Will Patton in this movie is kind of hard. Wow. I feel like I have to explain this award no, I every know, other no, time. I know, I know. It's not. We're not saying they're on Will Patton's level. I we're know that. In <laughs> this movie, I, they gave the most intense performance. <laughs> no, and I know that, but it's like, is there even, <laughs> is there any performance in this movie that is even yes. intense? Plant a flag. I'll come back. Uh, to you. Who's your Will Patton nominee? I'm scared. <laughs> Bob has well, the upper hand. You can speak. Go ahead. I'll let you. <laughs> Michelle Rodriguez. Michelle Rodriguez. I knew that was coming. <laughs> I 
I also went with Michelle Rodriguez. I think, like I said, her just the look on her face could grind a zombie into dust. That's Don't throw these. I need these. <laughs> there you go. Appreciate it. All right. Here, just have one. <laughs> they are literally firing things back and forth at each other in here. <laughs> That's all that's going on right now. Right. Yeah. Who's Flip your flops and paper number? towels are flying. I'm going to go with uh, Colin Salmon. Colin Salmon has yeah. one. Yeah. Huh. Mr. Fish. One of the best expo dumps ever. It's a good expo dump. Yeah. And that's a skill to deliver yeah. an expo dump, believably. They want to hear him talking more. I hear you, brother. He has a nice voice. I'll give him that. All right. I'm going to give you another chance to plant your flag and, and be definitive and make a choice. Quinn Tarantino. <laughs> <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, who, who's your nominee? I, I'll go with Michelle. All right. I'll go with Michelle Rodriguez. There we go. That's three to one right now. Let's see what the patrons had to say. We got Rebecca K, and I always just say K because I can never pronounce her last name, but we're thrilled that she's here back again for the first time since Once Bitten, I think, which Ooh. was just last week, uh, wasn't it? So did that overlap that way? Or no, no. <laughs> I can't remember Rebecca's. Oh, we're, Werewolves Within. She did. That's it. Werewolves Within. Oh, okay. Uh, she also went with Michelle Rodriguez and Adam Lofton joining us. This is the first time he's done a non comic book movie in a while. Also went Michelle Rodriguez. He said she got she's got her badass chick going, taking zombies downs. I thought she did great. And then Josh Whitehouse, also joining us from the Patreon, said Michelle Rodriguez. Absolutely loved how she played her character, just a badass chick who absolutely kicked ass. Loved her line at the beginning when Matt said, you can't do this. She replied, blow me, and <laughs> hauled his dumb ass away. Give it up. That is, f- what, six votes for... Michelle Woo! Rodriguez. See Brie Larson, that's how it's done. <laughs> <laughs> Go Letty. <laughs> All right. Yeah, because she's family. This is right. Yeah, it's, a, it's a family thing. <laughs> the next award we give out is for who is the worst actor in Resident Evil? The person whose range was that of a trash can filled with dirt. It's the trash, it's the Steven Siegel trash can filled with dirt. Trash can, oh trash can, it's a trash can full of dirt. Yeah. Love never dies, and neither do they. <laughs> Love is eternal, and that's a long time. All right, who was the worst? Eric Mobius. Eric Mobius. <laughs> Abbas. B- Abbas. Boobius. Both his, of you. His name's too sucks so much, you can't <laughs> pronounce it right. <laughs> <laughs> I really feel like everybody in unison in this table no should hesitation. just say Eric Mobius. Eric Mobius. <laughs> JD was pretty bad. No. No. JD no. was believable douchebag. What was his name? SWAT guy, number three. Eric Mobius was just, I'm a cop with great <laughs> feathered hair. I'm a junior varsity quarterback, damn it. Oh, dude. I'll, Eric Mabius <laughs> I'll tell my father about this. I'll tell my father about this. <laughs> I'm a cop. You can't do this his to me. Worst, the worst line is when he's like, looks like it's coagulated. Why does that <laughs> matter? Like, he looks that like the blood's on the blood's on the concrete. No, the blood's on the concrete, and he's like, "Looks like it's coagulated." And she's like, "Why does that matter?" He's like, "Cause Means blood doesn't do that till after blood. you're dead." <laughs> well, yeah, and that's the other. The line is because yeah. blood doesn't do that till after you're dead, and it's like, first of all, that's scientifically inaccurate. Second of all, it could have been. <laughs> <laughs> it could have been cool, but you it's sucked like, at selling it. First of all, wrong. <laughs> first of all, you're wrong. No. <laughs> Second, even if you know you were right, you suck, so I don't care. You're That's wrong. Wh- My blood's coagulating right now. All right, I went with Matt, too. Eric Mabius, I had on I said JD is an honorable mention. Even his, like, when he's trying to do the sister thing, yeah. and he's like, you know, some of us try to make a difference in the world, and then I'm just going to talk really quietly, <laughs> and I'm going to deliver on the next phone. I'm gonna I, I don't like Ryan at ASMR, so don't, don't do that. <laughs> he's, so cra- he's so crappy in Hollywood that they booted him to the Hallmark it. Channel. <laughs> I literally <laughs> didn't even know what he was saying when he was doing his, a bunch like, of Hallmark movies. Yeah, they, he, he sucks so much at Hollywood. They boot him into the Hallmark. Oh, I love that channel. Perfect <laughs> spot for him. Yeah. All right, let's see if they concurred on Patreon. Rebecca went with JD. Oh. Uh, but Adam went Eric Mabius, who is the cop who gets scratched. He has no emotion and just did a horrible job. Agree, Adam. And Josh said, Matt, just a dumb, lame character with awful facial expressions. <laughs> really on point always seemed <laughs> so dumbfounded and lost as an actor not to mention when he gets clawed at the end of the train and absolutely no sells it and just looks at it and goes eh, like wtf man you just got clawed by a giant zombie thing could you at least pretend to care get this actor out of this movie <laughs> he cares about how much LOL. i care about watching about breaking bad <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the next award we give out is for Steve James, a memorial award in his honor called the Unsung Hero Award. 
Steve James was rarely the main character, and so this award goes out to someone who was not a lead that made the movie better just by them being in it. So, Bob, we'll start on this side this time. Who is your person that, in a non-lead role, you thought made the movie better? Michelle Rodriguez. Michelle Rodriguez, mm-hmm. unsung hero. Um, I'm going to do the inverse and I because think, I thought she was really good, and I don't think that's the wrong answer because she did great. I think I know where you're going. <laughs> open the, open the door. Cap, you're, you're going to look. 100% look. Open the door, Go James. Martin Cruz. Martin Cruz is the unsung hero of this movie. Just stop, facts. Stop True. yelling at my guy, <laughs> telling him to hack the thing, open the door, come on, do it. Because do you can relate because people yell at you all the time, all like the your kid yelling at you all the time to do something. <laughs> Come on, man. (laughs) Martin Cruz is the unsung hero of this movie. Kaplan saved their lives a dozen times over, and all he does is get yelled at. I agree. He's like the Samwise Gamgee of this movie. (laughs) Where it's like, without him. Don't open the door, Sam. That's why I'm so mad. Open the door, Sam. That's why I'm so mad. But I agree. Like He had such a hard time in this movie. I feel so bad for him. And I even said that while we were watching it. I was like, this poor guy. And, 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 And him and Michelle, are you guys get killed when we get stuck with Matt? Yeah, like... Of all the people that should have survived it, it should have been Kaplan or Michelle. Matt should have been dead immediately. He should have choked on the water that was spraying out through the window when they walked in there. Go check, <laughs> the, <laughs> go check the flooding. Okay. <laughs> it's really bad, sir. It's really bad. <laughs> I drowned. Matt I drowned. <laughs> it's really bad. It's flooded. I drowned. Sir. <laughs> that, hey, when he came back and said it's flooded, it was almost me like the it's blood, sir, from the Thanksgiving trailer. Oh, you know what God. I'm talking about? Yes. Yeah, it's with Michael Yeah, Bean. yeah, yeah. It's blood. blood, sir. Son of a... Right. That's, that's the but level... That's, of, now we get freaking Patrick <laughs> yes. Dempsey in the sheriff role of the Thanksgiving yeah. movie. Oh, sorry. Damn it. All right. Who is your unsung hero? Martin Cruz. Let's go! Dude. Hey. Kaplan. I wish... And like Michelle Rodriguez is a good close second, but like yes. yeah, I wish that's not a bad vote. Literally wish that the movie was just about Rain and Kaplan. I watch the two of them go on right. an adventure today. That's it. Don't no. Don't even need anybody else. Just give me Rain and Kaplan going down to Raccoon or down. down and and honestly, it's it's a credit to Martin Cruz <laughs> yeah. who it's like it's kind of a blah character probably on the page. It's just like right. Regular, oh, he brought it to life. Like cliche hacker guy in the movie and mm-hmm. he did a great job with it. Mm-hmm. He was definitely better than Barnaby. I want to yeah. see those two go to Wendy's get the group order. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, this is a Wendy's? So th- <laughs> order the nuggets, Kaplan! We're waiting out here! Uh, we don't have any We don't have any more of the sauce. Blow me. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, watching her order at Wendy's and Kaplan's just can't get the door <laughs> Can't get the door can't get the, You Where's can't get the window. window. It's cooking! <laughs> no, he's working the drive-thru and he's like, Oh, I get my order. It's cooking. I don't know what you want me to do. What do you want me to do? It's in the deep fryer. I can't cook it any faster. <laughs> oh, poor Kaplan. Oh. All right. So here's what the pay. So actually, Rebecca, I liked this vote. She went with Jason Isaacs as the narrator in William Birkin. So huh. I like just a okay. little nod okay. towards Jason Isaacs. Love that guy. Uh, Adam went with Colin Salmon. He was great. You felt safe with him in charge. Too bad that laser grid cut him to pieces. Yeah. <laughs> what would happen if he actually blocked thing. that? That's a. Uh, how would you how? block it? He dives. He ant mans and just dives through one of the tiny holes. <laughs> but if this if this is the boys, he would figure out a way. Yeah, he would figure out. <laughs> yeah. A way. I couldn't vote. I just can't vote for anybody <laughs> named after a fish. Uh, the wow. That's specific. <laughs> <laughs> Josh Whitehouse also went Colin Salmon. If they hadn't killed his character off so early in the movie, he would have been in my top favorite three things. Brought everything he had to the role. Made you believe right off the bat he was a leader. I also liked how he made you believe he could survive the queen's trap in the hallway just for the queen to throw a grit at him and just be like, LMAO. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, Bummer. Cubes. So that's uh, two votes for suck. Colin Salmon, but Bummer. Martin Cruz is ultimately going to win with three votes the Steve James Unsung Hero Award. Let's go. And don't you yell at him about it. <laughs> yeah. Show him some love. <laughs> and so this, fi- uh, this next one is uh, the three favorite things. This has this could be performances if you want, but it doesn't have to be. It can just literally be anything. Your three favorite things in the movie. I'm going to force you, even if you hated it, to be positive about Resident Evil. Ryan, what were your three favorite things? Love the musical score. Okay. Literally one of my favorite scores. And Marilyn Manson got a lot of praise for writing a musical score, but... Really, what it comes down to is Marco Beltrami held his hand. Yeah, and if you look at Marco Beltrami, he did like the score for Scream, for Three Ten to Yuma, for oh, Hurt Locker. Like Marco Beltrami is the Punisher. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yep. for real? Yeah, two thousand four yeah. Punisher. He did Marco Beltrami is a working class composer that has done great music for like thirty oh. years for movies. I'm glad you got to shout him out then. Yeah, 
So love the score. Okay. To be honest, I love the production design in the movie. I like the set pieces. I like that they're all practical set pieces, that the CG is really limited because it's terrible. <laughs> yeah. But like when they go to dining hall B, like it's a legitimate like, okay, this is a this room is gonna kill us. Yeah. Like, yeah, this is not looking good. And you can tell it's real. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. for sure. And, and uh gosh, I mean I I say it again, Michelle Rodriguez. She is she is the movie and the you know, the fact that we're stuck with Alice as the protagonist through the franchise. Yeah. It's like, well, like you don't even know who she is in this movie. She loved the game so much. Michelle Rodriguez told her agent after she played it, said, yeah. if they ever make this into a movie, I want to be in it. Right. So it was her agent that found out they were make like knew that already and then went back to her and said, Hey, I found out they are and got her into it. Nice. So nice. Yeah. Nice. Uh, all right. So what is your three favorite things, Stephanie? Well, Michelle Rodriguez. Okay. As with everybody, because mm-hmm. I just love her and I think she does a great job and she's just a badass bitch. Mm-hmm. Sorry, you're going to bleep that. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> I also like, I think it's kind of what Ryan said, like production design, but for me, it's like how the movie feels. I don't know if that makes sense. No. But the movie, the feel of the movie is very like creepy and like you kind of feel trapped too. And I think that that's really cool. Yeah. It's like they you, they were able to like bring your anxiety up like throughout the movie. And I thought that that was cool because, I mean, if you think about that situation, that's terrifying. Half you are mile in underground. A, you are yeah. underground, a half mile underground, and you were just shut and locked in somewhere yeah. and you cannot get out. And then you are being killed. Like it's, yeah. You felt like you were being followed and it was, that was really creepy. Yeah. Um, what else? One more. Oh, I know. One more. Uh, Give me something <laughs> good. Pass. <laughs> you got to have three. Pass the torch. Pa- you didn't like pass. anything else besides Michelle Rodriguez and the feel of the movie? <laughs> How about uh, that time she kicked that dog in the face? <laughs> that's I, your big thing? That's going like to be your big thing. I like the tomato soup dogs. The tomato soup dogs. All right. That's it. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> Look, I gave two performances. I went with Mila, Mila, and uh, I know she didn't have a great acting performance, but her her action chops, I think, are believable and viable. And there's not one point in this movie like we talk about all the time with Emily, Amelia Clark as Sarah Connor, uh, like, just where you just I don't believe for a second. I, there's no point with where the opposite happens with Mila, where I'm like, I don't buy it. Like you totally buy it with her. I can buy Mila as Sarah Connor in a remake. Oh, of for sure, Terminator. Yeah. So those two are my, and then the other thing is just, I, I like the brutality of the movie. I like that they uh, resisted all the urges to go PG-13 to get the kids to see it, and they kept it a hard R because the movie, or the games are super violent, and I think the brutality of the movie really works in its favor for the type of thing that they're doing. So those are my three favorite things. Bob, what are your three favorite things? I would probably have to go with kicking a dog in the face. <laughs> it was yes. great. Yes. Because... Uh, I would love to do that sometime. That's right. Life. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> Mila and Michelle. That, Mila and Michelle are almost on everybody's. Yeah, Mila, Michelle, and dog kicking. Dog kicking. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> gotta love it. I wish there was a dog here right now. I'd I kick just, it right in its face. Just kick it. <laughs> give me a reason to. Give me a reason. Give me a reason to reason. do some pogo sticks. I'll, I'll punch you in your outer space. <laughs> Uh, Rebecca also went with Mila and Michelle, and then her third thing was the zombie dogs. So hmm. there you go. There you go. Awesome. We're on the same page here. Josh Whitehouse said, look, the look and design of the hive. I thought the effects. Hey, look at that. Employees and the studio did a great job creating great set pieces. Look at that. Uh-huh. There you go. Uh-huh. And then two, as a big fan of the game, I love the look of the zombie dogs. They did a great job with them. And number one, and I'm glad no one gave this one a shout out yet, the Red Queen voiced by Michaela Dicker. I loved the look and the voice and the attitude and the dialogue they gave her. I thought it was really effectively done, the Red Queen. I thought making her like a little girl yes. was creepy. Creepy. Like, because it could have just been. Yes. Like an old yeah. woman, like, hmm, but it was way creepier that it was a little girl. The, throw, oh, yeah. the throwaway line of dialogue about it, too. <laughs> oh, the computer designer divined it after his nine-year-old granddaughter. Oh, okay. right. Yeah. I, I wish they, I I wish they no. designed a no. nine-year-old girl from the hood. That would have been more right. hilarious. Just started throwing <laughs> lingo out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rebecca also handed out a Thomas Thomas Technical Achievement Award to James Butler, the fight coordinator. She wanted to give a special shout That's out good. to That's good. Shout to that guy. As well. Mm-hmm. And so I know we've spent some time already early in the episode talking about, look, if I had been in this movie, how would I make it good right <laughs> how would you make a good arnie i think okay 
all the jokes had about him getting in there and ripping his skin off and stuff, that would be great. I know everybody loves Mila in these movies. Arnold as the protagonist. You gender swap it. You make the wife the one that double crosses everybody instead of the husband. Like she wakes up in a shower. Like Sharon Stone with uh, yeah. the Total Recall. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Right. And a six movie Arnold franchise fighting zombies. Are you freaking kidding me? I. You know, like you said, I was on board if you just have him waking up in the shower and, you know, you get some, like, Arnold Zero. side, some Arnold, Arnold side butt. butt. <laughs> yeah. so, or just go full, you know, full listen, frontal. There's no it's need like for side folder. nothing, okay? For me, we get rid of the, get this little puny cu- curtain out of here, okay? We're just going to wake up with my, with just everything on the tile, okay? <laughs> face uh, up. Behind my back. I had to fight for face up. That's what I had to fight for it. <laughs> no, but can you imagine, uh, I mean, we never got to see him fight zombies, or even do a big six series. I mean, I guess he's been in all six of the Terminators, but he started to do bit parts towards the end. But my God, just an Arnold beating up, shooting zombies. That'd be great. I would, I think that would be awesome. I don't. Even, I wouldn't even care if it was a character from the game or not. Alice know. wasn't a character from the game. No, not at all. That would have been fantastic. And then at the end, when he kills his wife, I want to ask you a question. <laughs> time to split. It's time to split. It's time oh. to separate. See, and that would have been <laughs> it. <Yep>. <laughs> Listen, I'm missing you already. Except I'm not going to miss you with this axe because I'm going to put it in your chest. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even attempt the Arnold oh. accent. Like that's, <laughs> no, that's, that's why exactly I, I don't do it at I all. I can't do it at awesome. all. Awesome. He would have been great as uh, the leader. Listen, as one. No. <laughs> this is what this is. What, so Adam goes. I, I would put Arnold. He goes. How would I put Arnold in this movie? Anyone in the crew when they go down in the hive, or as Colin Salmon Salmon's place? There's one. Arnold would just throw zombies and have the biggest gun, right? But then I picture him in the rave cave. And he's like, he's like I got a cigar. Exactly. Just, like the lasers just bounce off. I laugh at your stupid lasers. <laughs> lasers don't even affect him. They cannot cut through this. This is. But it cuts his cigar. Just, then he, he gets just pissed. Oh, punches the lasers back. <laughs> just, <laughs> he just. <laughs> <laughs> Kaplan, get the door open. The lasers are getting their ass kicked. <laughs> <laughs> Kaplan, help the lasers. <laughs> uh, Josh also said Arnold playing playing one uh, uh, in Mr. Salmon's part would have been awesome. Uh, it would have I would have found a way to beat the he would have found a way to beat the queen's trap in the hallway. I mean, he beat a predator, right? He could beat the red queen. And then when I get in there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to crush your stupid red face. All right, and he's he, literally the man is sorry. He could choke a hologram. He literally I, just <laughs> yeah. He could choke a hologram. Saying, he's dude. just choking a nine year old girl. It's okay. <laughs> like, ah, and Alice and Kaplan get like, what are you doing? What are you doing? He's like. Ah, <laughs> it's okay. She tried to kill me. He just picks the mainframe up out of the ground. That's Consider right. yourself yeah. emancipated. That's right. <laughs> Consider this an emancipation. You're now an adult. <laughs> 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 All right, guys. We got to give it a final rating here. Um, ultimately, we have to decide. Uh, there's the objective nature of the movie as a piece of film. Is it a good or bad movie? There's how we felt about it subjectively. Is it a bad movie? Full stop. No qualifiers. Is it a, yeah, maybe it's a bad movie, but it's super enjoyable. It's a bad movie that rules. Or is it, you know, critics are totally wrong. This is a straight up good movie. Where do you guys land? Give me what your rating is and then a, a short, re, you know, a reasoning as to why you feel that way. And uh, go ahead, Ryan, you can go first. I'll tell you, this movie holds a special place in my heart. Oh, does it? This is the first R-rated movie that I didn't have to sneak into. Oh, nice. Yeah. And then uh, it's also the first DVD that I ever bought. Really? Yes. Dude, I didn't know this. Yep, yep. So it's hard to be objective, and you know what? I'll say when it comes to, like, the expo, it's literally a movie that's 96 minutes of just, all right, here we go. Yeah. At least least they just go. Yeah, they just go. Like, it's just expo dump, action scene, expo dump, action scene, expo dump, action scene. And even the expo dumps, really, like, you still don't know who the main character is. <laughs> or, like, when they're wandering off, yeah. and then all of a sudden they're just like, oh, next scene, cut to them running back to the group. Like, right. why are they doing this? Yeah, where like, were they? <laughs> it's a terrible screenplay. Maybe. It's a terrible screenplay. But I'm saying, <laughs> good movie, full stop. Wow. I'm going good movie, full stop. And you don't feel like that's your just because you Just because you bought it first? Yeah. It, I because mean, you rubbed one out to the DVD of it? He doesn't you want to what? disappoint little 17-year-old you know Ryan. 
<laughs> he wasn't 17 when that movie came out. He just out. said he didn't have to sneak into it. He I, oh, no, no, no. His I uncle took look, him. I didn't. <laughs> no, no, look. I had to sneak into that movie. This I was 14. Because you're right. No, we, were, we were 14. I was not 17. But my buddy's <gasps> Uncle Tito... Who was like, yo, Uncle Tito, yes. respect. Oh, dude. Yo, Uncle Tito. I need to know more about Uncle Tito. Dude, my friend. <laughs> why were you hanging out with my him? Friend, my buddy. <laughs> uh, we, <laughs> there's a group of friends here that we, uh, you know, in eighth grade or whatever. My group of friends. My buddy lived with his grandma. They all had jobs and wives? Not at all. Okay, well. <laughs> all we did was ride I know BMX. one of them was Uncle Tito. No, my buddy lived <laughs> with his grandma and his Uncle Tito. Right. And his Uncle Tito was like your classic. He was a DJ. He was into oh, Fast and of Furious. Course he was. Yes. Like. And he was into bootleg movies. And we were like, dude, Uncle Tito, come on, take us to see Resident Evil. And he was like, all right, I got you. <laughs> that was it. Uncle Tito sounds like a great influence. <laughs> he, right. It was just Uncle Tito. Was, there was literally like five of us 13, 14 year olds in Uncle Tito. And he's just like, yeah, give him tickets. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Steph, where are you on Resident Evil? Well, I mean. As someone coming in totally fresh. Yeah, totally fresh. Had never seen it before. Didn't. I mean, I have heard Resident Evil, obviously. Who hasn't? I I never played the games or anything. I don't know. I don't know who has. People stuck in a forest in Madagascar, maybe. (laughs) Stuck a half a mile underground. (laughs) (laughs) They don't know what it is. Um, I really enjoyed it, besides the fact that, like, I didn't understand anything that was really happening. (laughs) I kept asking Ryan questions, like, do we know who who this ends? Like, do they explain who she is? Do they explain what's going on? And he's like, uh, not really. So, for what it was, it was very entertaining, but I still really have no information about it at all. <laughs> James is dying, apparently. James over here is just He's chomping. Infect- He's been James infected with the T-virus. James is chomping at the bit over here. Ultimately, I think it's a good movie. Full stop. Oh, full stop. Mm-hmm. Even though you do- you just got done saying, I, don't know, I still don't know what it's about. <laughs> what happened? I think I was there. Things happened. Good movie. Full stop. I'd watch it again. All right. I That's would watch fair. it again because I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was creepy. I it's an without itch. being over the top, like disgusting with All like right. the zombie stuff. All I right. just yeah, I enjoyed it. And I usually base my votes on whether I would watch it again, like by myself. Like would I put it on? Yeah, maybe. All right. It's an enchanting experience. Oh, okay. I wouldn't go that far, okay. but sure. <laughs> All right. Bob, you want me to go or do you want to go first? You can go. All right. I'll go. All right, so understanding that this is the first time I saw this movie since it came out, and the time it came out, I was angry and hated it because of my love for the game series. So I tried really hard to put all that aside this time, to not be upset at the fact that there should have been a movie <laughs> about Chris Redfield and Jill Valentine, and instead we get Alice and Matt and all these other people, and I tried to look at it objectively. And it also helped that before I watched it, I learned that Capcom really was the ones to blame for making this decision and not even the filmmakers. Um, with that and I've said many times, expectations are everything. And so going in free of those expectations and maybe a lower bar than I did the first time I went in, I actually really liked it way, way more than I did the last time I saw it. This is an instance where I feel like a lot of times there's a movie you love, you go back to it, you're like, oh gosh, why did I love this? This is actually bad. Very rarely do I go back to it. Right? Very rarely do I go back to the movies on this. (laughs) Yeah. It rarely does the opposite happen, where I go back to a movie that I thought was crap, and then I really like it. Yeah. Um, I, I think Resident Evil has its weaknesses from a plotting standpoint. I mean, the dialogue, the writing of some of the dialogue is really good, but the, the way that the script is plotted out is nonsense in, no, in it, places, you know, for sure. Um I think that Resident Evil, to say nothing of the sequels, because I haven't seen any of them, and so I'm sure it's downhill from here in many respects, I think this is a straight-up good movie, uh, which wow. I surprised myself with that when, when huh. I was looking at it. You waterworld yourself. Oh, I did. How I about don't that? Think this is a, I don't think this is how a bad movie. That, I'm everybody. interested in Bob's opinion I think opinion that now. the fighting is well done. <laughs> it's shot well. It, the action is staged well. And script issues aside, overall, I think it works. So I can't say it's a bad movie. Where are you at, Bob? Three against one. Let's go. It's a good movie. Full stop. Full stop. All right. Why do you think that? Oh, that was so easy. I mean, got two obvious choices. The leads. Mm-hmm. Nice eye candy. <laughs> they, can kick, they can kick major booty. <laughs> okay. So you like the action? I like the action. Yeah. All right. The musical score, just uh, minus the uh, fancy name guy that Ryan mentioned, but Marilyn Manson's No one ass- cares about him. Marilyn Manson's an asshat, so. Yeah. 
<laughs> um, yeah, the musical score was good. Okay. The atmosphere was cool. All the fancy words I'm trying to say. It's a good You don't movie. have to say fancy. You can it's just a good movie. It's a good movie. I don't everybody. care about the special effects. It's a good movie. Yeah. Try making a movie. Okay? It's hard. World, <laughs> try making a movie. You crap all over the special effects for everything. Dial of Destiny was terrible special effects. It's a good movie. It has, it, yes, weak points. <laughs> Spotty CGI. Who cares? Like it's a movie. Said, challenge. Yeah, challenge you accepted. Cares. To go make a movie. You know what? <laughs> you guys right. go make movies. You think Our party. Exactly. Go try and make Rick your own. Rick the T. Foster had to stare at a computer screen for 17 hours just to put fire on a barn that we never actually set fire to. That's right. Okay? And it go looked make good. a movie. And it looked good. And did he cry about it? No. Yes. I don't yes. might have. Yes. Did he, did he cry about it? Uh, uh, probably. Okay. He might have. But that He's probably matter. crying right now. He's... <laughs> He's PTSD from it. Let's see. So Go yeah. make a movie. Every time he sees a barn now, he's like, Ugh. Just like yeah. you guys in your video game. The graphics weren't exactly as up to par. Oh, it's a, it, why, you, you guys oh. suck. Okay. That escalated quickly. <laughs> it's a good movie. All right. Well, let's see what the patrons had to say. Rebecca, uh, after four good movies across the board here, which shocks me, uh, Rebecca said, bad movie that rules. I think I really like this movie because of when I saw it. Like kind of like Ryan was saying, I realize that it's not the best movie, but I really enjoyed watching it. So it's a BMR from Rebecca. Adam said, well, here we are finally at this franchise. I saw this in theaters because I loved the game. Thought it was decent. The graphics were a bit rough in areas, and still, <laughs> it still was a fun watch. It still was a fun watch. Calm down, Bob. Calm down, Bob. Calm down. Adam? Adam. 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 Go make a movie. It's Adam. a bad movie that rules also. First, okay. well, and he always slide. hits us with the fun facts. He goes, first Resident Evil game was released in 1996 on the Sony PlayStation. I already said that. Well, did you? Oh, did you say 96 two. when it came out? I did say 96, yeah. Look at how smug he just. Not only did he say I did that, then he did this little like. See, he's he's <laughs> freaking he does it all this the time. little dance. He's who? Who is he? The guy who turns around. See, it's not that hard. <laughs> That's who he is. He just J D. Uh, he just J D. Just J D. Adam Lofton is Kaplan, and Ryan he did is that on, JD. He did that on set when everyone was getting swarmed by bees. Ryan's like, yeah. they're just bees. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You want to know something about Someone's that? Like I'm deathly allergic, but no big deal. <laughs> or was Steph stepped on a nail. Guys, she just stepped on a nail. Yeah, literally. Like, it's <laughs> True a run, story. I don't know where I'm at with True my tennis shot. True story. <laughs> and I had you know to go what? try. I had to go try and find somewhere oh, to pee outside. And you and know what? Stepped on a nail. And you know what? what? I got stung six times <laughs> by bees in that, one go. That explains a lot. And oh, I got. Oh, good for you. And you know what? And I have. <laughs> one, and I've been shot two, with a nail gun. Three. So. Four. Five. Six. Nice. Yeah. And you know what I did after I got shot with oh, a nail gun? I worked for seven and a half hours. You're one so hell of a model saying, American. What you're saying is you're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Toxic masculinity right there. Toxic masculinity over here. <laughs> they're weird, weird, they're flex, away. weird flex, Ryan, but okay. They're all running away from the bees. I'm just standing there getting stung. Like, come on, guys. I'm just getting stung. Let's go. I'm sorry. Uh, our final patron, Josh, says, look, the CGI is pretty dang awful. The uh, acting overall is pretty meh. But man, is this just a fun sit back and watch zombie movie. I really liked uh, that it was straight to the point. No need to drag out any of the scenes. <laughs> That's true. And a perfect hour and a half, almost uh, almost perfect hour and a half horror movie. Straight up good movie from Josh. That's, That's five right, goods, Josh. Two bad movies that rule. Zero straight up bad movies. Man, this one, Resident Evil. I'm surprised. Woo! How highly it was scored across by the panel. Yeah. Man. I didn't see it any other way. I think everybody thought this was a good movie. Yeah. Well, I know the franchise critically wasn't well thought of, so oh. I went in with real low expectations. But I'm glad. I'm yeah. glad that it wait till you watch. Wait till you watch the second one. Well, this is what I'm saying. This is part of why our show. <laughs> Your exists. expectations. I think they're all fine. The down. third one's the ter- worst this, one. This is part of why our show exists, so that we can talk about movies like this mm-hmm. and go. No, this movie's awesome. It rules. I don't give a crap if the critics said this is a bad movie. Right, right? you shouldn't. This movie's great. It's a matter of giving it a chance. Right, and that's even why I don't understand like critics looking exist at it sometimes. Why revisiting it. Why do they even it. exist? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because this someone, is why we're they got to get paid, you know. To talk about why these movies are awesome, and the, the we're gonna save these know, movies from the depths of critic what hell. I'm saying, yeah, we're gonna yeah. go into their hive. And the ones that we don't... And murder them all. No, we're not going to do that. Sometimes we... Uh, <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Sometimes we'll shovel the dirt on them ourselves. Like, next week, I don't think we're going to have nearly as many good movie <laughs> votes because this one <laughs> comes straight out of the bowels of hell. Uh, oh, boy. Next week, Spot. we have 
yoga hosers. <laughs> what? Oh, oh, oh that oh, one. Kevin God. Smith's uh, movie that he made for his daughter to star in. He, he pulled the Will Smith, basically, with Jaden, and he's like, I'll make a vehicle for you, darling, and uh, made a movie for his daughter to star in. I don't know how he got Johnny Depp to do that movie. Because Johnny Depp's daughter is the co-star. Yeah. I was just going to say, because oh. apparently Ray Depp is... Apparently, the two of them, Nepotism. they went, they started <laughs> at its finest. Yeah, they went to school together since kindergarten, and so Kevin Smith's daughter and Johnny Depp's daughters have been besties forever. And so, sure, at some Hollywood exclusive Hollywood LA, school, it was it's crazy private. that they met each other. Yeah. Weird, what do you right? know that? Yeah, Johnny Uma Thurman's Depp. daughter was there too, and uh, Patrick Schwarzenegger was I have there no too. No issue with her. So with no, Maya the Hawk. two, so She's the movie awesome. actually stars. Uh, Kevin Smith's daughter and Johnny Depp is Lily Rose Depp and uh, Harley, isn't it? Harley Harley, Harley, Harley Quinn, Quinn Smith. Smith. Harley Quinn Smith. Lily Rose Depp and Harley Quinn Smith uh, are the two stars. But <laughs> Johnny Depp does do a supporting role yes. in the movie. Yes. Uh, re- reprising his role from the Walrus movie he was in. Um, Tusk. Tusk. Thank yeah. you. That was, a, kind of that was a good movie. That was very something. messed up. So, yeah. So we'll be talking about yoga hosers. I, I don't want to give the, you know, the cat out of the or let the cat out of the bag early on what I think of it, but I've only, I've only watched about half of it. But oh my god, does it suck! <laughs> <laughs> so I'm interested to see if maybe it gets better and what the other people that are here with us next week think. So tune in for Yoga Hosers next week, uh, and we'll be back again with more every single week after that. Thank you guys for joining us every on, single week for every single week. another eleven years forever until I die forever. <laughs> Forever. Yes, we're going to continue this podcast. It's going to be wonderful. And that's a long time, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, on that note. <laughs> on that note, on behalf of Ryan Farrell and Stephanie Farrell and Bob Hauser. Penis. I would, <laughs> <laughs> I would like to say thank you for listening. I couldn't do it. I had to change my projector. <laughs> can I? Could you hand me that flip flop? I don't know. Okay. You, you think about all the people in this room? That's true. I'm gonna hit you that's with this true. thing. <laughs> no, absolutely not. This James this, is on my side. He's the only one on my side. This isn't for what was said. This is for the little dance. <laughs> okay, it's for the little dance. This is for being JD. <laughs> <laughs> You're just Ryan bees. caught one. Uh, I said on that down. already. <laughs> Finish the song, James. <laughs> Finish the song. It's time for the episode to be over. I'm doing it. It's time to shoot things with real people now, Ryan. Push the button, James. Just push the button. I'm doing it, guys. Push fade the it out. End just fade show. it out. I'm doing it. Fade it out. <laughs> <laughs>